The story begins with loud music playing in a nightclub, all the tables were occupied by visitors, another unknown group performs on stage and entertains the audience. A man's hand puts an empty glass on the table, next to it stands a luxurious bottle of whiskey, the man invites Mr. Yan to have a drink with him. A man hugs an unknown girl, wondering if she is offended that he fought with her boyfriend, the girl didn't care much about this, because for her the guy was nothing, just a backup option. With her head resting on the man's shoulder, the girl looks at him with loving eyes, she thinks that the guy is too far from Mr. Young. The man adds with a laugh that it was not for nothing that he made gifts for the girl in the form of clothes and various bags, the girl laughs in response. The man hugs the girl more tightly, causing her to press tightly against Ian, the girl asks the gentleman to stop. The man thinks that Han Hao is pathetic, because he was not even allowed to touch the girl's hand. The girl, through a playful laugh, asks the man to calm down, because she was in pain. At this moment, Han Hao approaches the establishment and decides to open the door with his foot, the door swings open with a loud roar, which attracts the attention of everyone present. The guy, turning to the man, shouts that Yang Hua is an animal and it's time for him to die. Several young guys are blocking Yang Hua, the man looks at Han Hao calmly. Through his grin, Ian wasn't entirely pleased with the guy's presence. The guy was serious, with a serious expression on his face, Han Hao declares that it is time for Yang Hua to pay for all the humiliation. The time is moved two hours earlier, the action takes place in a luxurious multi-story building. The building was a five-star hotel called the Aroma of Night Roses. Han Hao walks through the hotel, the guy was an ordinary fourth-year student in Qingshui City, the guy explains that because of his mistakes, he missed the opportunity to study at the best university and ended up going to a regular college. But Han Hao was only glad that his goddess Xing Jiajia, whom the guy was chasing after all the time, also entered the same college. Han Hao explains that in order to win the girl's favor, he did everything possible, Han Hao takes on all the girl's housework and does it at night. The guy brought the girl's favorite breakfasts every day at the same time. Han Hao tried his best to get the girl to pay attention to him in the end, the guy was angry that Jing agreed to go for a walk with him. The guy was very embarrassed by such closeness, Han Hao was afraid to even take the girl's hand. The guy with shaking hands was still trying to take the girl's hand. But as soon as the guy touched Zhang's hand, the girl immediately demanded that Han Hao control himself, because she was not one of the free girls. The guy was very depressed that the girl treated him like that and wounded him to the very heart. Han Hao continues to work hard every day to save up for a suitable gift for Zhang, because next month she has a birthday. The guy hears a woman's voice in the next room asking Mr. Yang to stop and not rush things. Han Hao, embarrassed, decides to eavesdrop on what is happening behind the slightly open door, assuming that someone is having fun, the girl tries to stop the man and asks him to stop. Through the crack in the door, the guy notices Jean sitting with a man, asking him not to rush, because they should close the door, the man calls the girl slutty, adding that he likes this type of girl. The guy, not recognizing the same Jean in the girl, embarrassedly continues to spy on the couple's relationship. The man begins to touch the girl and examine her, the girl, without further ado, allows the man to do this. Han Hao continues to watch everything that is happening, at one point he realizes that the girl is Zheng. Unable to simply watch what is happening, Han Hao knocks down the door and enters, the guy demands that the couple stop. The man turns his head towards Mr. Yang with displeasure, the girl was amazed by Han Hao's presence, she did not understand how he ended up here. Han Hao takes the girl by the hand and demands that she come with him. This made the man very angry, which is why he gets up from the table and kicks Han Hao in the stomach with all his might. The guy flies to the side and hits the wall, the guy felt severe pain. Unable to stand on his feet, the guy falls face down on the floor and lies in this position. The man slowly approaches Han Hao and places his foot on the guy's cheek. Gritting his teeth, the man was infuriated that the guy had broken into his room and started ruining his evening, he asks if Han Hao is tired of living. Han Hao, saying that he is Zhang's boyfriend, tries to get to his feet. Taking out a cigarette and lighting it, the man laughingly asks the girl whose Zhang actually is. Straightening her hair, the girl declares through a playful smile that she will forever belong to Mr. Yang. From what he heard, Han Hao was amazed and depressed at the same time. The man removes his foot from Han Hao's face and approaches Zhan, taking the girl by the waist, Ian invites the girl to drink something in another place. 
The guy lies in the same position until the door closes, he still couldn't believe what he heard. The guy tries to make a fist with his shaking hand, gritting his teeth so as not to scream, the guy silently begins to cry. The guy's desperation slowly grew into anger, Han Hao wanted to take revenge on this couple and make all the offenders pay for their humiliation. A guy walks along the evening street, there were small Khrushchev buildings on all sides. There was a large bruise on the guy's face from Ian's boot, the guy was thinking about revenge. The guy continued to walk among the houses and at one moment a large stream of water fell on his head. An elderly woman starts yelling at the guy that it's late and he shouldn't be wandering around her neighborhood, Han Hao silently looked at the woman, but did not dare to respond to the aggression. From behind Han Hao, he explains why the guy looks so upset. Coming closer, the elderly man clarifies that he specializes in luck and for just 100 yuan, he will clear all his negative karma. Han Hao understood that he had nothing to lose and even though he was a beggar, the guy felt sorry for him, because at such a time it is quite strange to beg for money. The guy looks through all his pockets and hands over only 10 yuan, saying that he doesn't have more. The man drinks his alcohol and takes the money, saying that he will give the guy a discount. The man, with a grin, abruptly puts his hand on the girl's neck, which greatly shocked Han Hao. Gritting his teeth, Han Hao adds that he is in pain, a strange golden glow appears on the guy's neck. In the area of the glow was a small rectangular device, it continued to glow and cause inconvenience to the guy. The guy could not understand what kind of device this was and why the wound healed so quickly, Han Hao adds that he begins to feel some strange power. Han Hao turns to the elderly man and asks who he is, the elderly man leaves silently, happy to have at least some money. A strange text window appeared in front of the guy's face, the system gives a complete description of the guy and his skills. The guy couldn't believe what he saw, he silently continued to study the strange window before his eyes. The text quickly changed to indicate that the system had completed merging with the host. A strange voice is heard in the guy's head, an unknown person begins to call the guy weak and another loser, asking whether he wants to change everything and stop tolerating such an attitude. The guy couldn't understand what kind of sound he was hearing now and who was talking to him. The unknown person was dissatisfied with the actions of the old man and that he had picked up some idiot back, Han Hao indignantly declared that he was not an idiot, not understanding who exactly was talking to him. The unknown man squints his eyes and indignantly declares that he has no idea who he is talking to. The guy looks at him questioningly, because he really didn't understand who he was talking to. The unknown creature explains that they have already completely merged together and, in fact, they have entered into symbiosis, the unknown person introduces himself as System Immortal or simply System, his nickname is Daddy. The guy looks away calmly, he is not very pleased with the new problem. Han Hao shouted sharply that he didn't understand what kind of daddy he was and he didn't need this stupid merger, demanding that he leave immediately. The system states that if she separates from the guy, he will die immediately, Han Hao was amazed by this, because he was planning a quiet life. The system starts laughing loudly, calling the guy an idiot, because this is just a stupid joke that Han Hao fell for. The guy waves his hand, he explains that he is not in the mood to joke and he should still get out, and preferably as soon as possible. Throwing up its hands, the system repeatedly calls the guy a moron, because he does not realize all the power, many mortals have spent their entire lives in search of that same immortality. The unknown person adds that he will give the guy a discount given that he is too young to understand, the system decides to show off its abilities, the first thing you do is activate the mystical wind, a stream of wind fell on the guy out of nowhere. The guy is quickly swept away with a scream, causing him to fly to the end of the street. Without waiting for the guy to recover, the system activates the ability, lightness of clouds, Han Hao suddenly flies several stories into the sky. Han Hao is in the sky, a surprised man in shorts is standing on the balcony, in the room, the woman met her husband, who, hugging his wife, explains that he was released early. The system decides to activate the ability, lightning bolt, strange sparks appeared in the area of the guy's palm. The electric discharge hits the window directly, the man could not believe what he saw, because he was hiding on the eleventh floor. Han Hao carefully falls to the ground without any damage. Looking at his hands, the guy does not understand how all this is possible, assuming that he is sleeping, screams are heard on the same floor, because the woman's husband discovered a neighbor on his balcony. The system asks whether the person liked it, because this is quite cool by human standards, Han Hao, 
continuing to look at his hand, cannot believe that all this is possible and he did not dream it. The system shows a thumbs up and explains that these are just flowers, and then there will be only berries, but the guy will have to train hard on the path of self-improvement, because then limitless prospects await him. The system is interested in what the guy wants most at the moment, the guy is trying to say what he wants. Clenching his fist, the guy says the name Yang Hua and that his girlfriend is Jin Jiajia is with him, Han Hao wants to take revenge on these non-entities. The system was amazed because it was an easy target, he was amazed that the guy was beyond the power of ordinary mortals. The system adds that it will take pity and give you a beginner's kit, all acquired items and skills were listed in the system window. The system also issues a task and the item with which you need to complete it, the guy gets his hands on hair ears, which greatly amazes Han Hao. Han Hao begins to shout at the system, assuming that it is again joking and mocking him, the system explains that this is an entry-level item and can significantly increase the guy's agility and strength. Han Hao was embarrassed, because he was a normal guy and it was not typical for him to wear something like that. Sighing, the system reminds that the guy has survived all the humiliation and this is a small thing compared to that. The guy agrees, adding that all offenders must pay for this, Han Hao is going to make Shen regret her choice. Currently, Han Hao is already in the club and standing in front of Mr. Yang. The man looks at the guy with a question whether he came to apologize or for some other reason. The guy wants to attack the man, but a crowd of Ian's guards begins to hold him back. The man declares through a smile that if even one of his hairs falls this evening, then Han Hao has won, all of Ian's subordinates clarify whether they should deal with the guy. All of Mr. Yang's men decide to attack the guy, not considering him a danger. Covering his face, the guy asks to give him a minute. Han Hao takes out pink, bunny ears, all the thugs around him look questioningly at the guy's actions. Han Hao silently puts them on his head. The bunny ears are on the guy's head, Han Hao was very embarrassed by such an accessory. Ian, pointing his finger at the guy, declares that guys are not his type, Shen asks Mr. Yang to calm down and not say such things. The guy was very embarrassed by this appearance, the system begins the readiness countdown. The entire crowd in the club slowly begins to surround the guy and mock his appearance. Ian's thugs also taunt the guy, calling him harsh names. Shen herself looks away with a grin, she was embarrassed by Han Hao's appearance. The system completes the countdown and Han Hao abruptly begins to run towards Mr. Yang's guard. Everyone standing in front of him was amazed at such speed, no one even had time to move. Han Hao walks around everyone like a shadow and appears behind them. A second later, all the guys' faces were disfigured by numerous blows, no one even had time to see the battle. Everyone slowly begins to fall soullessly to the ground, Han Hao's hands were bloody from being beaten by the crowd of guards. Mr. Yang himself was covered in sweat from this situation, he couldn't believe what he saw. Ian decides to finally clarify how the guy managed to become so strong, Han Hao slowly approaches the man. The guy silently swings at the man, not wanting to engage in dialogue with the offender. The blow lands right on the man's nose, leaving him severely disfigured. The man hits his head against the wall, Han Hao's fist was still in the area of Yang's head. The system reminds you that the item's effect will wear off after 30 seconds, Han Hao grabs the man by the collar and adds that money cannot solve all his problems. The guy starts shouting at the man that money won't help him and he won't be able to do whatever he wants anymore. After this, the guy begins to beat the man with a series of blows, Mr. Yang can't even answer. The system states that the item's effect has expired, the man was covered in bruises, Ian's entire face was covered in numerous bruises. The guy takes off his bunny ears and demands that the man get down on his knees and start calling him his daddy, because otherwise Han Hao planned to continue beating him. The man kneels shaking and calls him his master, Ian apologizes profusely and asks him to take his money, Han Hao puts his hands in his pockets and looks at the pitiful young. The guy comes closer and demands that he not move, because he will take everything himself, Ian continued to kneel and shake. The guy takes the man's wallet and states that this will be compensation for his treatment, the guy specifies the card password. Without raising his head, the man explains that there is no password on the card and you just need to swipe it. The guy turns his gaze to Jean, wanting to look at her for the last time. The girl covered herself with her hands and looked at Han Hao in fear. Without further ado, the guy looks away and heads towards the door. Putting the wallet in his pocket, Han Hao silently leaves the establishment. The system notifies Han Hao that the task has been completed, 
and that the reward will be immediately sent to the bearer. Behind the guy is a man in a suit, the unknown man silently looks at the departing Han Hao. After the guy leaves, the unknown person decides to call, notifying the boss that there was an incident at the establishment. An unknown person sitting in the office is told by phone that they had an incident and a strange guy took the thing they needed, the man explains how this could happen. The agent reports that he does not understand how this happened, the man at the table demands to send people and follow him, without unnecessary noise, the agent says he will do everything. Through a grin, the man states that he really wonders who is so brave that he decided to cross the man's path. At this time, the system congratulates you on completing the mission and reminds you that the guy was awarded 15 points of immortality, and also that Han Hao received a super large newcomer gift as a reward, the guy agrees to watch it right now. The system displays the entire list of received items from the super large gift, Han Hao doesn't understand what he's gotten himself into. Holding his chin, the guy finds the chaos technique interesting enough to study. The system states that the chaos technique is a spiritual practice and it will be very useful for the guy in developing physical attacks. The guy also decides to clarify that the system was talking about the superhuman level. While picking its nose, the system realizes that Han Hao knows absolutely nothing, deciding to explain everything. The system explains that the world of immortals includes a large number of levels, which will serve its development. The system adds that each level is divided into beginner, intermediate and advanced. The system decides to end this with the fact that Han Hao has just begun his journey and is therefore at the initial superhuman level, Han Hao states that he doesn't care because he's already cool enough. His hands folded, the guy clarifies whether other seekers of immortality have the same system, the system claims that only Han Hao has such a daddy. The agent watching the guy doesn't understand who he's communicating with, Han Hao shouts pointing his finger at the sky. The agent decides to stick his head out and see who the guy met. The next day came, Han Hao is already in his dormitory. The guy decides to look at the selected wallet, Han Hao couldn't believe what he saw. The guy takes out a large wad of money, guessing that there is approximately 30,000 yuan in the wallet. Having pulled out the entire pack, the guy also notices a strange device. Han Hao takes an unknown object in his hand and begins to examine it, the guy couldn't understand what he was seeing now. In his hand was a strange small golden colored thing. At that moment, a knock was heard in his room, the girl behind the door asks if she can come in to see the guy. Han Hao clarifies whether Ma Jieli is outside the door, the girl continued to knock on the door. The guy opens the door and comes out to the girl, Han Hao greets his friend. The girl asks if the guy is ready, because it's time for them to go out, Ma Jie she was dressed nicely. The guy, having forgotten about his plans, clarifies where they plan to go. The girl sighs and reminds her that it's her birthday and Han Hao sat her down in the restaurant, Ma Jie asks if the guy forgot. The guy holds the back of his head and looks away, Han Hao declares that he could not forget this and therefore he will take her to a good establishment. The girl takes Han Hao by the hand and offers to go already, the guy was embarrassed that Ma Jie pressed herself so close to him. The guy gives up and agrees to go with the girl, because Han Hao still promised Ma Jie. The girl was amazed that Han Hao brought her to the most expensive restaurant in Qing Shui. Han Hao got the money from, because all this time he was saving for a gift from Jie, Jie after asking if the guy was sure that he wanted to stay here. Han Hao explains that he broke up with Jie, Jie and with this money he wants to invite his best friend to such a restaurant. The girl was embarrassed by this statement, she was very pleased that Han Hao was taking care of her. The girl was partly glad that Han Hao broke up with Jie, Jie. The guy decides to open the menu on the table, Han Hao did not understand at all what was written on the menu. Han Hao decides to point with his finger what he wants to order, the waiter understands that the guy is ordering at random, but agrees with everything. The girl apologizes to Han Hao, because she needs to leave for a couple of minutes. Getting up from the table, the girl brushes against a passing man and knocks over his glass. The man's clothes were drenched in wine, the unknown person begins to shout at Magia, accusing her that the girl is not looking at her feet and is flying in the clouds. The girl, confused, begins to apologize to the man, the man begins to shake with anger and declares that the girl doesn't even know how expensive this suit is. The man looks at the girl embarrassedly and calls her a beauty, the unknown person was already tipsy. The man moves closer to the girl and demands that Ma Jie come with him. Han Hao, not wanting to continue watching this circus, takes the man by the hand. Han Hao asks the man to calm down, 
because they will pay for the damage to the clothes, but the man should not let his hands loose on his girlfriend. The man calls Hanhao a knight in white armor, he explains that his suit costs 100,000 yuan. Hanhao accuses the man of lying, because doormats cannot cost that much money. The man with a grin declares that everything is clear to him, because the guy is a beggar, the man adds that there is no need to pay him, because he will take his girlfriend as compensation. With a sneer, Hanhao clarifies whether the man still needs compensation. The guy takes out 20 yuan and offers to go to the laundry, adding that if it's not enough, he'll pay extra. A man throws a glass with a statement that the guy is crossing all boundaries when he talks to him like that. The man suddenly grabs the girl's hand and leads her along. The man, holding the girl by the hand, declares that he will not allow himself to be insulted in public. Hanhao shouts for the man to let the girl go, otherwise they will talk differently. Men in suits stand up from nearby tables. The man declares that the first one to kill the guy will get the girl for tonight. Everyone who wants to stand behind the man's back and begin to flex their fists, the man looks at Hanhao with a grin. Hanhao was fine with this, he wanted to teach all the guys a lesson with his new power. The guy turns to the system, saying that he can't cope without it. With a grin, the system congratulates the guy on activating the secret mission. The task says that the guy should not attack with abilities for the next three hours. The guy was amazed at this statement, considering the situation he was in now. The entire crowd slowly approached the guy, Hanhao looked at them in confusion. The man continued to hold the girl, demanding that everyone take the guy and bring him to him. Hanhao couldn't believe what he heard, the system wonders if the guy is happy about the random activation of a secret mission. The system sighs once again and understands that he should act, the system activates steely fatherly love. The system adds that although he cannot violate the rules of the mission, however, he was able to throw at Hanhao a buff that increases strength a hundred times. Hanhao yells at the system that there is no point in increasing strength a hundred times, because he could not attack. All the men had already come close enough and one of them even swung at Hanhao. The man holding the girl shouts after the crowd to beat the guy to death for his long tongue. The guy begins to quickly analyze his options, he realizes that his strength has increased a hundred times. The guy looks at the crowd with a grin, he has an idea what to do with this enormous power. The guy points his finger at the man sitting at the table, Hanhao demands that he go out alone to deal with him, because he is their boss. The entire crowd declares that the guy has no idea who Master Jiang is and he doesn't care about the young guy, some claim that the master does not care about such a guy. Master Jiang abruptly stood up from the table and found himself behind the crowd. Without further ado, he scatters the entire crowd in front of him, all the men soullessly fall to the ground from such strong blows. Han Hao was also amazed by Master Zhang's strength. Some of the crowd flew past Han Hao, the guy was thinking about what he should do with this Master Zhang. The guy was puzzled where such a strong old man came from, Han Hao could not even think that he would be so strong, assuming that the master was furious, since he even scattered his people. The old man states that no one gave the guy the right to choose for him, the man holding the girl was amazed that Master Jiang decided to go out to fight. The man describes the old man as a former special forces soldier who can even twist the heads of lions with his bare hands. The girl asks Han Hao to be careful, the old man asks if the guy wants to fight him one on one after this. The old man states that there is no person in Qingshui city who could survive his blow. Han Hao mockingly takes out the money and invites the old man to go outside the city and see the world, because he is deeply mistaken. The guy was sweating slightly, he hopes that he didn't miscalculate and his plan will work, because he has no choice but to go all in. The old man declares that the guy knows nothing, calling him an upstart. The old man, not wanting to continue talking, rushes into battle to destroy the pathetic guy. At the last moment, Han Hao notices that the blow is quite dangerous. The guy decides to close his eyes before hitting the old man. But the old man stops a centimeter from the guy's body, and a loud bang is heard. From such force, the clothes on the old man's hand are torn, and bloody abrasions appear all over his hand, the man could not believe what he saw. The old man is thrown back, his hand was greatly distorted and disfigured, the old man screamed in severe pain. The old man is thrown back several meters behind the man's back, the man holding the girl begins to shake in fear. Han Hao breathes a sigh of relief, he adds that he won and did not quite believe that he could survive this fatal blow. Han Hao understands that the effect of the buff is not limited to only the attack, 
but also applies to the rest, the guy also notices that this is because the force acts in both directions. Han Hao, with a serious face, finishes by saying that he was right and his real action is to deflect damage. The man still couldn't understand what the guy had just done and how the old man lost, the girl runs towards the guy with tears. Han Hao hugging the girl, she offers to tell the guy, but the guy wants to show it clearly. The man takes a step back and tries to justify his behavior, he begins to apologize and call himself an idiot. The guy shouts at the man and reminds him that he insulted his girlfriend, as well as a crowd attack on him alone, the man was shaking with fear. From such tension, the man wet himself, causing Han Hao to step aside. To Han Hao and asks him to calm down, the system reminds us that the effect of steely fatherly love is over, the man introduces himself as the owner of the establishment, Li Yen, and is also invited to go upstairs for a few words. The guy takes the girl and heads towards the exit, he did not want to continue to remain defenseless in this restaurant. Already near the exit, Han Hao explains that he has nothing to do with them and let him tell the head that he will come next time. At the entrance, two guards block the exit, which surprises Han Hao. Han Hao reminds him what he did a couple of minutes ago and therefore it's better not to touch him, the man explains that he saw the technique and was very impressed by it, but it cannot be compared to Elder Li's techniques. Therefore, the man reminds him again of the proposal, because if he leaves, it will be an insult to elderly. Seeing no other choice, Han Hao heads with the man to the second floor, the guy analyzes what he should do next without the system. The man knocks on the door, adding that he has brought a guy, at this time, Han Hao is thinking about how he can wait until the end of the mission without fighting. A man and a guy come in, the elder asks Han Hao to wait until he finishes his game. The man took his leave and walked out the door, Han Hao sits down on a chair and begins to look around the room, the system also notes that it was possible to find like-minded people, suggesting the use of x-ray vision for inspection. The guy is surprised that this man is also looking for immortality, Han Hao activates his x-ray vision amulet. Having applied the seal to his right eye, the guy looks at the man's statistics. Opposite the elder, a small window appeared with his description, as well as information about his level, the elder's level was superhumanly high. The guy notices that the elder is above his level and in the event of a conflict he has no chance of winning. While the man continued his game, Han Hao tried to analyze everything and come up with a new plan. The girl playing with the elder was outraged that she planned to give in, but in the end she won again. The old man says with a grin that while the girl hoped that he would give in, she relaxed and lost. The girl explains that her grandfather simply broke his promise and it is not her fault that she lost. The man laughed at this, while drinking his whiskey, he explains that the man teaches the girl about life. Han Hao, unable to continue waiting, declares that the old man is so sick that he drinks. The guy asks if the man is bored with life. The girl turns and looks askance at the sitting Han Hao. The girl gets up and declares that the guy doesn't dare communicate with her grandfather like that and he's bored with life. The man asks his granddaughter to sit down and slowly walks towards the guy. Han Hao panicked a little, but still tried to remain calm. The guy himself doesn't notice how he started shaking his leg from nerves. The man comes close to the guy and clarifies what Han Hao just said. The man hovers over the guy and asks again what Han Hao just said. Han Hao realizes that the man is greatly superior in strength and is not even able to get up from his chair. Han Hao to repeat what he said. In the bonus episode, Han Hao checks with the system to see if the amulet can view other things as well, the system confirms with a grin. The guy looks towards the elder's granddaughter and observes the girl's body. Blushing, Han Hao couldn't believe what he saw, he tries to find out from the system. The system increases the ability by introducing x-rays, from this, Han Hao begins to be indignant and asks to return it back. The guy tilts his head, he realizes that he cannot move at all, assuming that this is level domination, the old man looks at the guy calmly. With a grin, the guy adds that although he said about alcohol, it turned out that it was all because the man does not want to go above the superhuman level. The man frowns and clarifies how the guy found out his current level. The man stops putting pressure on the guy and allows him to catch his breath, Han Hao realizes that it was not in vain that he used x-ray vision and saw his condition. The guy remembers the entire list with the elder's description. The guy adds that he knows everything about the elder and even when it starts to rain, the man begins to have aching pain in his chest because of which he cannot move to the next level. The elder did not understand how the guy could find out such information about him, he looked questioningly at Han Hao. 
The man wonders where the guy came from and knows all this. With a grin, the guy explains that he is also a seeker of immortality and as a man, Han Hao does not plan to reveal all his cards, in his thoughts, the guy understood that he had managed to suppress them with his strength and now they would not rush to conclusions. Not, the guy himself could not believe that he would be able to avoid the conflict, the girl comes closer and declares that the guy is misleading them. The girl wants to punish the guy and punch him in the face, because then Han Hao will speak normally. The girl comes closer and takes Han Hao by the collar, the guy adds that he knows how to cure this disease. The girl lets the guy go, the man asks if Han Hao can share a little of his cards and tell it. The guy is trying to come up with an adequate explanation. Holding his chin, the guy begins to walk around the room with a smart look. At this time, he tried to beg for medicine from the system, because he urgently needed it. The system declares that it is ready to help, but for the amount of 15 points of immortality. The guy immediately agrees and asks the system to hurry up with the decision, the immortality points were taken away and Han Hao only had 10 left. The system explains that it is not possible to cure the old man in the usual way, and therefore the system offers to purchase a ball of healing wounds for 30 points. The cure wounds ball can cure most common diseases, but Han Hao still lacks 20 immortal points. With a smirk, Han Hao states that he has a method that he can use to cure the man, but it will be difficult. Han Hao explains that in order to heal, they will need a healing ball, the system notices that the guy is learning quickly. The girl was inspired, she wondered where the guy planned to take the ball. The guy asks the girl to calm down, because only he can get the medicine and it will take three days. The man agrees with a laugh, adding that if their new friend helps, it will be a great mercy on his part. The man puts his hand on the guy's shoulder and offers to walk with him and resolve some issues. Walking down the corridor, the elder adds that he plans to thank the guy for his assistance, Han Hao tries to clarify where exactly they are going. The elder sits down on an empty chair and explains that he has come to solve a problem that recently arose, the man standing in front of him in shorts is trying to say something, but is too worried. The elder, taking a cup of tea, asks the man to sit down first. The man tries to sit next to the elder, but at this moment Han Hao clarifies who allowed him to sit down. Pointing his finger at the man, he explains that he was told to sit down. After which he silently sits down next to the elder, the girl silently looks at the guy and his actions. The man tries again to sit on the chair, addressing his master. While pouring another cup of tea, the elder orders the man to stand up. Frightened, the man gets up from his chair and stands in front of the elder. The elder explains that he understood the conflict between Han Hao and the man and decided to propose, a man gives his villa in the Huansui district to a guy, and in the name of respect, he will not try to take revenge on the man. The man was amazed at this proposal, he tries to remind him that this is a whole villa. The elder stands up and looks down at the man, he waits for a reason why this offer should be rejected. The man fearfully agrees, after which he looks away. Going outside with Mats, the girl clarifies what exactly the man wanted from him, the guy explains that everything is fine and also shows the keys to the brand new villa. The girl did not immediately believe in the veracity of the keys, but the guy convinced her that these were indeed the keys to the villa, the girl thanks the guy for saving her. At this moment, a girl is standing on the balcony with an elder, the girl wonders if her grandfather is afraid that the guy lied and will try to hide. The man explains that while the guy is in Qing Shui, he will not be able to hide from the eyes of his family. Han Hao gets home and wearily climbs the stairs, the system announces the completion of the task and the assignment of a reward. The guy opens a store and realizes that he only has 10 points left to buy a scar to heal wounds, the system notices that the guy will soon understand how difficult it is to get immortality points. The guy adds that it doesn't matter to him now, because he's very tired today. Yawning, the guy opens the door, Han Hao wants to just go to bed at the moment. The guy was amazed at what he saw, because he had locked the door from the outside. Everything in the room was scattered and gutted, Han Hao assumes that robbers broke into his room. Han Hao's pants pocket. It was Ma Jia, the guy didn't quite understand what happened and why the girl was calling. The girl explains that her room was robbed and everything was turned upside down, Ma Jia was depressed and didn't know what to do, the guy was amazed by this. The guy thinks this is strange, because it can't be a coincidence, the guy asks the girl not to be nervous, the system explains that it is not clairvoyant and assumes that someone is interested in Han Hao. The guy asks to wait for him, 
because he is already running towards her apartment, the system adds that this could be a seeker of immortality and such people can return at any time. The guy closes the door behind him and heads towards Magia. The next day, Han Hao was already at his villa in the Huansui district. The bedrooms and other rooms were luxuriously decorated, without any saving of money. Ma Jia asks Han Hao to wake up because she has prepared breakfast for him. Just waking up, the guy barely gets up, continuing to yawn. Coming out of his room, the guy greets the girl and asks how she slept in the villa. The girl, standing in front of the guy's door, explains that she has not yet recovered from yesterday's incident. Also, the girl does not understand whether she can stay in this house, because this is not entirely correct. Han Hao clarifies what exactly the girl considers wrong, because this is his villa and she can live peacefully in this house. The guy tried to analyze yesterday's incident, because nothing was stolen from them, but the fear that they would come again remains, Han Hao believes that Ma Jia should not be left alone, because it is too dangerous. The guy asks why the girl is constantly looking at the guy, it seems strange to him, the girl looks away and denies it. The girl also reminds them that they will be having a reunion. Holding the back of his head, the guy asks whether Mats will go to the meeting, because he himself did not want to go. The girl enthusiastically declares that of course she will go, because she was the head girl and it is her duty to come. Han Hao adds that then he will go with her, because in the near future the girl should be next to him so that nothing happens. The girl looks away embarrassedly, because Han Hao has changed a lot. The next day, Han Hao and Ma Jia went to color karaoke bar, where the alumni meeting was supposed to take place. Han Hao's classmate decided to perform one song. The girl hummed a song while the others clapped and had fun during the meeting. Everyone asks Han Hao to sing the green light song, the guy wasn't very happy about this, Ma Jia laughs awkwardly from behind. The two guys start discussing Zheng and Han Hao's relationship, one guy says that the girl looks quite modest. Shi Qi adds that the guys are too blind, because she deceives with her charms, and Han Hao himself is to blame for not following. The guy reminds that Shi herself ran after Han Hao in high school, the girl, holding her head, explains that she confessed to the guy, but did not receive mutual feelings. The guy offers to help the girl take revenge on Han Hao for such an insult. During the party, Han Hao sat silently on the sofa and read something on his phone, he was not interested in what was happening. One of his former classmates decides to come up and find out why he is sitting alone and away from everyone. The guy demands that Han Hao get up and go share his life experience. Han Hao, without looking up from the phone, asks what life experience the guy is talking about. The guy mockingly asks Han Hao to tell him how Jin cuckled at him, after all, others are very interested in hearing this, so as not to step on a similar rake. The guy reminds that the girl was beaten off by a rich old man, many of Han Hao's classmates began to mock him. Han Hao was greatly infuriated by this, he stands up and demands that the guy stop, the guy reminds that they have been together for a long time and know each other better than anyone else and therefore nothing prevents them from sharing what exactly happened. The guy looks intently at Han Hao, noticing in his thoughts that he had a desire for revenge for a long time and will finally destroy it tonight, the guy continues to mock, adding that Han Hao has little money and therefore he is offering a vacancy in his company as a cleaner, with a salary of 3,000 yuan per month. Han Hao pushes the guy away and tells him to calm down, because one more word and he will have to answer for it. The guy looks furiously at Han Hao, he reminds him that he has many people who will kill him. Han Hao offers the guy a try, because everything he has was given to him by his father, Ma Jia comes closer and tries to calm Han Hao down. Shi Qi is also tired of listening to such arguments, so he asks both of them to calm down. The girl stands opposite Han Hao, confidently looking into his eyes. The girl decides to ask if Han Hao regrets not dating her at school. Looking away, Han Hao explains that he has nothing to regret. At the guy again and then looks away, disappointment is visible in the girl's eyes. The girl also notices exactly how Ma Jia is holding Han Hao's hand. The girl decides to leave it at that, thinking that the club is too boring, she heads towards the exit, the guy doesn't understand why Shi Qi leaves so quickly. The guy runs out after Shi Qi, still trying to find out where she is going. The girl, lost in thought, did not see the passing man, which is why she bumps into him. The girl begins to accuse the guy of not looking at his feet. Not wanting to continue listening to the girl's indignation, the unknown person takes her by the throat and rises above the ground. The unknown man demands that the girl repeat what she just told him, 
the guy tries to stop the unknown man and tell him to let him go. At this moment, Han Hao is sitting carefree in the club, a call comes to his phone, the guy does not understand what unknown number is calling him. Han Hao decides to sit down and try to hear what kind of unknown person is calling him. Han Hao explains that it's hard to hear, because where he is is too loud. The elder explains that he called and reminds that three days have already passed and they need to fulfill their agreement. Han Hao was confused, because he had completely forgotten about the promise. The guy tries to explain that he has done almost everything and the elder shouldn't worry. At this moment, Han Hao's classmate flies into the club with great force. The guy falls to the ground, his face was badly beaten. The unknown person slowly comes behind him with Shi Qi, holding the girl's hands, the unknown man explains to everyone present that Shi Qi insulted him and called him blind, the unknown person asks if the others know the girl, the unknown person introduces himself as Fei Long, and also a very decent person. So, the man asks which of them is blind, he or the girl, Fei's face was severely disfigured, and his eyes were small. Music was playing in the hall, everyone in the club suddenly fell silent, no one wanted to get into trouble. The guy's face dropped and he didn't know what to say, everyone preferred to simply remain silent. Fei, still holding the girl, states that all of her friends agreed with him that Shi Qi is wrong. At this moment, Han Hao is standing at the other end of the hall, speaking loudly on the phone, the elder reports that he has arrived and is located downstairs of the club. The elder hangs up, Han Hao didn't know at all what to do with this situation. At this moment, Fei decides to ask Han Hao a question. The man asks if Han Hao has any objections to his question. Han Hao draws attention to the man, calling him very scary. Stepping back, Han Hao continues to call the man a sea monster. Fei was furious, because his boyfriend had now insulted him, he began to squeeze Shi Qi tightly in his hands. Han Hao observes that an unknown person is holding his girlfriend hostage, which did not suit him. The man was angry to death, because everyone had insulted him from an early age. The man throws Shi Qi aside and again clarifies who the guy called the monster now. Han Hao with all his might. Han Hao calmly steps back, causing the man's blow to simply miss. All the people in the hall were amazed by Han Hao's actions. The guy seemed to have disappeared, and the man's blow simply hit the air. Fei himself didn't understand what just happened, he was worried about where the boy had gone. While standing above Fei's head, Han Hao continues to talk to the man and explain what exactly worries him. The guy asks that when Fei opens his mouth, he also opens his eyes, Han Hao lands his foot straight on Fei's face with all his might. The man was amazed that some boy kicked him in the face. Han Hao decides to end his speech by saying that he still thinks that Fei is scary. The man was depressed by such words, because he was very worried about it, the system notices that Han Hao currently has enough strength to cope with an ordinary person. All the guy's classmates were still scared of Fei. Shi Qi was amazed by such strength, because Han Hao managed to protect her while everyone watched silently. The system sends a notification about a new achievement, lend a helping hand for which you receive a reward of 10 points of immortality. At this moment, the elder also enters the club, he notices the guy's excellent kung fu. The elder continues to praise Han Hao and also calls the guy capable. Han Hao hands a small box to Elder Li and declares that this is the very medicine, namely the wound healing ball. The guy explains that if a man has doubts, Han Hao can take him back and double check everything. Elder Li takes the box and takes out a ball, the man believes that this is not necessary, because it was generous that the guy decided to help him. The man puts the wound healing ball into his mouth. Elder Li slowly swallows the ball, waiting for some effect. The energy of the stone begins to flow through the man's veins. Red energy begins to sparkle around the elder, the man explains that he has long missed such a pleasant feeling, a surge of energy. The man puts his hand on the guy's shoulder, calling him honest, so elderly asks him to call him if there is any problem. At this point, Fei tries to get to her feet, holding his face, the man could not ask Han Hao for his words. The man falls to his feet and runs towards Han Hao, shouting that his boss will not forgive the guy for insulting him. Elder Li stands in front of the guy, he was not happy that some freak was threatening Han Hao. With tears in his eyes, the man demands that they stop calling him a freak. The man did not want to leave it so easily, Fei could not bear such a serious insult. The man declares that he is not Fei Long if he does not defeat all the offenders that evening. Elder Li looks at the thug with an impassive gaze. Fei does his signature punch, but elderly manages to stop it with just one finger. 
The man's hand rested on his finger and was unable to overcome such a powerful technique. Fei began to sweat, he could not understand what he should do next, because the old man turned out to be many times stronger than him. Headman Lee asks him to tell Boss Wu that if he decides to lay a finger on Han Hao, he will have to deal with Li Tianhao. Headman Lee looks at the man angrily, only one word was read in his eyes, go away. Fei was very scared of Elder Lee and therefore immediately decides to run away. With a smile, Elder Lee says goodbye to Han Hao, not wanting to disturb him, Han Hao says goodbye to his new friend. Han Hao notes that the healing ball worked quickly and he should use one himself, the system reminds us that it spoke about this before. One of Han Hao's classmates puts his hand on the guy's shoulder. The beaten guy asks for forgiveness for today's litter and from today and forever he decides to call Han Hao his brother. The guy also adds that he is giving a VIP card to the spa salon, which is run by his family. Han Hao notes in his thoughts that this is what changing shoes in flight is called. The guy also adds that if Han Hao decides to invite someone to dinner, then he should go to them. Shi Qi slowly approaches Han Hao and without further ado decides to kiss him. The guy with bruises on his face was amazed that the girl could kiss Han Hao so easily. Everyone present was no less surprised by this turn of events. One of the guy's classmates clarifies why they are in such a hurry and do everything in the club. Ma Jie could not believe what she saw, she was simply in a stupor. Han Hao jumps back to the wall from this, clarifying what the girl is now trying to do to him. A blushing Shi Qi declares that from now on Han Hao is her husband and she will not give up so easily. The girl turns around and heads towards the exit. The system decides to add that the guy's soul is too sinful, also adding that the greatest attraction will remain strength and power, Han Hao could not move away from the girl's kiss. The guy states that he is not interested in much now, especially self-development. Han Hao tells Ma Jie that it is already late enough that they should leave. The girl nods approvingly, but different thoughts were running through her head. At this moment, the unknown person in his office learns that Boss Wu's man has been greatly offended, the man believes that he will not have to get his hands dirty. The man grins at what he heard, saying that all agents should continue to observe and find out all the information. The next day, Han Hao was in his villa, on the phone, the guy finds out that someone was already at the airport. Without explanation, the guy heads for the exit, the girl is trying to find out from Han Hao who exactly arrived. The guy explains that his mother's friend has arrived and therefore he will be occupied throughout the day. The girl tries to say something to the guy, but he silently closes the door and leaves on business. The girl remembers that she still has to go to work, but she could not do this, since she promised Han Hao that she would only go out with him. Han Hao arrives at Qing Shui Airport to pick up the woman. The guy is walking through the airport, at that moment a familiar voice begins to call the guy. The woman greeted the guy, because they had not seen each other for quite a long time, standing next to the woman was a girl named Wang Xiqin. The woman explains that she also decided to take Xiqin on the trip, the guy explains that the woman is a good friend of his mother and therefore he will definitely help them in any way he can. Han Hao extends his hand and offers to help the girl with her luggage. The girl asks not to help her, because the guy looks too rustic and this could ruin her image in the eyes of others. At this moment, the woman takes the girl by the hand and takes her aside. The woman asks to stop talking to people like that, because they came specifically to see Han Hao. The girl explains that she doesn't like the guy and she doesn't need any suitors, especially beggars like Han Hao. The woman explains with a smile that the girl has character and he shouldn't take everything to heart. The guy was confused after hearing what he heard, especially that the woman called it character. The guy explains that his aunt will be able to stay with him for a few days, and in the evening he has reserved a table at a restaurant where they can have dinner. The girl mockingly clarifies what kind of house they are talking about, because they will have to sleep on the sofa, and since they have too many things, they still need to book a hotel room. The woman repeatedly asks the girl to calm down and stop being so sarcastic, the girl turns her head out the window. The guy, communicating with the system, explains that his mother has been trying to marry his aunt's daughter for a long time and now they finally decided to come, which does not make Han Hao very happy. Han Hao points out that even if Si Qin doesn't like him, he won't lose much because of it. The system throws up a new secret mission with the goal of making Wang Si Qin fall in love with him. The guy couldn't understand why the system issued such an idiotic task, the system briefly answers that there are no options. The system asks not to worry, because he will understand when the task is completed. 
The system talks about the sympathy system, which only Han Hao can see, when the heart reaches 100 points, the mission is considered completed. Arriving at the house, the guy explains that they arrived at his house. A woman and a girl come out in front of the mansion and look closely at it. The woman was amazed that the guy had acquired such an expensive house in the last year, Han Hao confirms that this is his home. The girl, despite her mother, adds that this house fell from the sky, the girl believed that the guy was renting this house. Han Hao notices that sympathy points are taken away even when he does nothing. The guy invites you inside the house, he asks you to wait while he pours water, the woman decides to inspect the house from the inside. The guy brings two glasses of clean water. The woman asks the guy to sit next to him, which greatly surprised the guy. Sitting in the middle between a woman and her daughter takes away another five sympathy points from Si Qin. The woman pretends to remember the forgotten item in her suitcase, after which she slowly heads out of the room. The woman winks and asks the couple to sit and talk while she is gone. The woman grins and leaves the room, Si Qin was still unhappy with Han Hao's presence. The guy was embarrassed and didn't know what to say to the girl, Si Qin did not plan to start a conversation with the guy. The sympathy points above the girl's head quickly begin to be taken away. The guy can't understand what to do, the system itself is already teasing the guy for his stupidity. The guy lowered his gaze and begins to think about it, Han Hao decides to make a good impression on the girl. The guy turns to the girl and starts smiling without any words. The girl felt disgusted being next to Han Hao, from which sympathy points continued to be taken away. In her thoughts, Si Qin was very angry at the guy's behavior, calling Han Hao a pervert for staring at her body. Han Hao held his head in despair, because his sympathy points were decreasing even more rapidly. The guy grabbed his face to remember at least one useful video on a pickup truck, because he needed to save his situation and complete the task. The guy opens his eyes wide, he remembered the very thing that should have saved him in communicating with the girl. The guy decides to contact the girl and find out what she likes more, cats or dogs, above Si Qin's head was a mark of minus 50 sympathy points. The girl, not understanding the catch, decides to clarify why the guy is asking, but still answers that she likes dogs better. The guy laughed and barked several times in response, waiting for a positive reaction. A strange silence hung in the room, the girl continued to simply look at the guy, Han Hao's situation was in a sad state. The girl calls the guy disgusting with a smile, sympathy points have dropped to their maximum negative value. The guy was covered in ice from this, Han Hao didn't know how he should surprise the girl. The girl can no longer be near Han Hao and decides to leave, the system adds that this behavior is too risky and should not be repeated at home. The guy couldn't understand why in the video all these tackles worked, the system thinks it would be weird if it actually worked. The guy decides to call, because he understood that he could not cope with this alone. Han Hao calls Mr. Lee and asks him for a small favor. The guy gets up from the sofa and asks his aunt and Si Qin to go to the restaurant with him. The guy adds with a smile that their car is already parked at the house, the woman was glad that Han Hao called a taxi in advance. The guy points to the exit and believes that he cannot forever torment his aunt by driving a taxi. At the entrance of the villa there was a luxurious limousine among numerous rose petals. A man standing near the limousine invites Han Hao, because the wine has already been poured into glasses and they should go. The woman was amazed by such an unusual gift, Si Qin was also quite amazed. In her thoughts, the girl noticed that Han Hao was trying to surprise her and this shocked her, after all, 50 sympathy points were added above the girl's head. The man explains that the wine is a collection wine from 2002, produced in France in the Burgundy wine region. Sitting in a limousine, the guy notices that the taste is mild with a long aftertaste, Han Hao invites everyone else to appreciate such an exquisite drink. The woman was amazed that Han Hao knew about wines, Han Hao was embarrassed by this and explained that he knew very little. The girl continued to believe that Han Hao was pretending and he planned to wait until all this was over, 20 more sympathy points were added above Si Qin's head. The guy understands that the girl says one thing, but thinks completely differently. Han Hao was glad that he remembered this phrase from the sommelier. The limo pulls into the grounds of Elder Li's restaurant, the woman asks if it's too expensive, but Han Hao explains that they shouldn't worry, the girl's sympathy increases by another 20 points. The girl was amazed at how luxurious the restaurant seemed, Si Qin's attention was distracted by something else. A small puppy walked in front of the car, he was so weak that he had to struggle to move.
Coming out at the entrance, the guy invites the girls to come with him, there was a waiter at the entrance. The man standing at the entrance asks Han Hao to show his membership card. Han Hao understood that Zhao Yang had already given him this card, and if not for it, he would not have come to this restaurant. The guy realizes that he forgot this card and is now in a deplorable situation. The girl adds mockingly that the guy doesn't have this card and he shouldn't make a show of it. Han Hao begins to kindly communicate and explain that he forgot his card and asks to still let them through while the driver goes and takes the card, the man at the entrance explains that without a card, entry into the restaurant is prohibited, without exception. The guy offers to buy this card right now, but the man was adamant, he explains that cards are made by invitation only and there is no other way for them to get into the restaurant. The guy demands that the man call his boss to investigate this situation. The man demands that the guy leave, because he looks like a beggar and someone like him does not belong in a restaurant. The woman tries to stop the guy and explain that it is not a problem for them to have dinner elsewhere, Han Hao explains that he won't stop so easily. The man angrily asks if the guy is going to be rowdy, the man begins to threaten to call security. Two guards in black suits appear behind the man. The guy covers the woman and Si Qin, from which the girl's sympathy begins to rise to plus 15 points. The man orders the guards to throw the guy away from the restaurant, an exhausted dog sits at the entrance to the restaurant. When a man sees a dog, he calls it a mongrel that has come again. The man decides to kick the dog to get it away from the restaurant. The girl was scared by this, because the dog could have suffered from such a blow. Han Hao realized with a grin how their entire confrontation would end. Without another word, Han Hao swings his leg at the man. The guy manages to stop the man with his foot and the blow lands on Han Hao's leg. With a smirk, Han Hao states that a man should be more merciful to such dogs. The girl was greatly amazed, which is why her sympathy rapidly began to grow to 81 points. Without any effort, Han Hao scatters the guards and the man, all the attackers scattered to the sides. Han Hao looks at the lying people calmly, the girl was amazed at the guy's nobility. At this moment, Han Hao's classmate comes out and demands to know who made all this mess. Han Hao silently turns around to understand who exactly is saying this. The guy observes Han Hao and invites him to have a cup of tea with him. The guy greets Han Hao calling him his brother, Han Hao explains that they were not very kind to him and he will apparently have to leave. The guy starts shouting at his subordinates with demands to prepare a VIP room where his brother can rest properly, the man, without further ado, went to fulfill the boss's demands. The guy asks to forgive him for such hospitality and explains that he will pay for everything himself, Han Hao hands the guy a dog and asks him to show his kindness. The guy is trying to understand what kind of dog Han Hao just handed him, Han Hao explains that he is giving this dog away for adoption because the previous owner was irresponsible and abandoned it. The guy, not understanding what to do with the dog, looks at it questioningly. The girl was amused by the guy's reaction to such a strange gift, sympathy also rose 8 points. Already at the table, Han Hao notices that although they had to go through all the troubles, he really liked the atmosphere in the restaurant, the woman is supportive, adding that Han Hao knows how to please a girl. Looking away, also agrees that the restaurant is really good, Han Hao offers to drink for today. In the girl's eyes, Han Hao had changed a lot and looked more like her ideal. The girl was very embarrassed and could not believe that this was the same guy in front of her, the sympathy points rose another 10 points and were at 99. The system notices that the guy has only one point left before the finish line, at this moment, a message arrives on the guy's phone. The girl agrees to have a drink together, but she was still confused by Han Hao's presence. The guy decides to open the message sent and he was greatly amazed by what he saw. The photo showed Ma Jie sitting on a chair, the girl had a bandage in her mouth and her hands were tied. The message said that Han Han needed to come to Big Dragon Bay to the 15th hangar within 30 minutes, otherwise something bad would happen. The guy gets up from the table with the statement that he urgently needs to go on business. The woman did not understand what had happened and why Han Hao decided to leave so abruptly. Without explaining anything, the guy leaves the establishment and closes the door behind him. Han Hao immediately arrives at the Big Dragon Bay hangar in search of the 15th hangar. Approaching the hangar door, the guy decides to enter and solve this problem completely. Han Hao looks around and sees Ma Jie sitting in the middle of the hangar. When the guy sees her, he immediately begins to address her. The girl tries to tell the guy something through the gag, but she doesn't succeed. The guy starts running towards the girl, Han Hao has arrived to save Ma Jie. 
The girl begins to shake her head, which the system notices, the system notifies of danger behind the guy's back. Han Hao stops abruptly, and a large shadow of an unknown person appears behind him. It was Feia, the man immediately rushes to attack and tries to stab Han Hao with a knife, but the guy manages to dodge at the last second. Out of anger, the guy calls Feia cripple who is just getting in the way. With a grin, the man decides to explain that he was well prepared this time. The man turns sharply to face the guy and begins to lick his knife to intimidate him. Han Hao asks if Fei plans to harm him, repeatedly calling the man a cripple, Fei doesn't understand why the guy is so self-confident. The man, without further ado, decides to harm not Han Hao, but his girlfriend, the guy could not even imagine such a vile act. The guy immediately manages to react and quickly takes off from his spot. At the place where the guy initially stood, dust rose and fragments of stones were torn out from such a push. Han Hao manages to stop the man with his hand, the guy takes the blade with his hand. The guy clutches the blade tightly, causing his hand to start bleeding. The guy has a strange feeling and begins to become disoriented. The guy couldn't understand what was happening, he slowly kneeled down trying to get up. With a mockery, Fei explains that this knife is intended for the destruction of immortals and everyone who seeks immortality. There was a strange red energy glowing around the knife, which stood out greatly from the others. The guy understands that the knife has absorbed all his spiritual strength and energy and because of this he has weakened. The system requires the guy to immediately activate the chaos technique, and Han Hao closes his eyes at these words. The guy feels that energy is no longer flowing away, he understood that the chaos technique would help him in this situation. The system adds that if the guy was more serious about training, then some toy would not have caused him damage. Han Hao decides to continue pretending, saying that his strength is leaving him and he will soon die, the system calls the guy an excellent actor. Fei mockingly demands that the guy continue to show off his strength because his humiliation has actually come to an end. The guy barely raises his head and tries to say something to Fei. The girl is trying to respond to Han Hao, she was very worried about the guy's condition. Feia approaches the girl and explains that the knife will soon completely drain all his strength and then Han Hao will come to an end. Fei takes the girl by the face and adds that the guy will continue to slowly suffer in agony. At this moment, Han Hao takes Fei by the shoulder and clarifies who the man is going to torture. The man doesn't understand where his knife went, he was also amazed that the guy could move after everything. Feia demands that the guy return the knife to him, because it is his boss Wu's favorite item, Han Hao begins to wave the knife in the man's face. Han Hao notes that it is Fei who will have problems, because it was he who lost boss Wu's favorite knife. The man panicked greatly, he offers to make a deal and after the guy returns the knife to him, Fei will never offend the guy. The guy declares that he is not interested in such things and roundhouses Fei. The guy kicks the man in the face with all his might, sending him flying into the distance. The girl hugs Han Hao through tears, she was worried that the guy was really dying. The guy puts his hand on the girl's head and calls her stupid, because everything is already over and nothing terrible happened. The girl begins to wipe away her tears with a smile, she agreed with the guy. Feia was slammed into the wall, he asked the guy to give his knife back. The girl thanked Han Hao for coming and saving her today, Han Hao decides to apologize for allowing this to happen, the guy offers to spend the whole day together. At this moment, Si Qin appears asking what is happening to the guy and why he simply disappeared and left her in the restaurant. The girl strikes a pose and demands that the guy explain his action. The guy looks at the girl in confusion, he completely forgot about the existence of Si Qin, and Ma Jie also didn't know her. The guy notices that the number 9 is starting to change to something, Han Hao assumes that he will not be able to complete this mission. Han Hao was confused, because he had been accumulating all the points for too long. The guy looks in surprise at the sympathy indicator, which was the maximum number. The task is counted as completed, the guy receives 30 points of immortality, as well as unlocking new items in the store. The girl sighs in embarrassment, he couldn't understand where Han Hao ran away from her. In the eyes of Si Qin, Han Hao was ideal and especially beautiful, the system adds that apparently this is love, but he doesn't understand women well and won't be able to help in any way. The girl finds Han Hao and looks at him indignantly, the guy asks the system what kind of thing we are talking about next. Si Qing and Ma Jie simultaneously ask Han Hao who they are, Han Hao looks away in confusion, not knowing what to say. Without coming up with anything, Han Hao simply replies that they are both his good friends. 
Xiqing reminds her that today Han Hao ordered a limousine for her and also invited her to an expensive restaurant, the girl still asks to say something about this. Not knowing what to say, the guy looks at the girl with a confused smile, and Han Hao greets the guy, because he has already returned home. The guy tries to explain that since Shua is a good friend of his mother, he should have taken good care of them, Han Hao clarifies that maybe the woman misunderstood him. The girl was perplexed by the guy's words, she is trying to find out why everything happened this way. A woman is trying to find out from her daughter what happened to her, Han Hao suggests that the girl is very tired and should rest. The guy looks away, realizing that he managed to wriggle out, even though it was a tough tip. The next day, Han Hao and Ma Jie went to the Radiant Business Center, the girl clarifies why the guy invited her here. The guy explains that the girl's clothes are outdated and they should buy something newer, the girl smiled sweetly in response. The guy notices a large number of people, suggesting that some kind of event is planned. Looking around, the girl notices something, pointing his finger, Ma Jie tries to get Han Hao's attention as well. The girl noticed a sign for large stone games. Han Hao notices that a stone games festival is being held in a large room. The girl doesn't understand the essence of the event, so she asks whether it's legal to do something like this, smirking, the guy calls the girl stupid and explains that, of course, it is allowed. The guy adds that this is called risky investing, where you try to find out whether the stone contains jade or not, the girl listens carefully to the guy. The girl decides to clarify whether it is necessary to saw the stone to find out, Han Hao explains that there is no technology in the world that could detect jade inside a stone, so people try their luck. The guy adds that in this art you can lose everything or get rich at once. The system notes with a smile that just because they don't see technology, it doesn't mean that it doesn't see Han Hao. Han Hao agrees because he has a system that will help him. The guy decides to use the X-ray vision amulet and looks through all the stones with his own eyes. The guy examines each stone and realizes that there is too little jade on this table. The man offers to try his luck and buy one stone. The girl points to one of the stones and asks the guy to take a closer look. The girl shows a stone that had a little jade on the outside. The guy also notices a green glow, suggesting that something fell off when he was carrying it. Having examined the stone with his x-ray vision, the guy notices that all the jade in the stone has already been drilled out and filled with something else. The guy takes this stone and another one, Han Hao notices that they have different weights. Several men take notice of Han Hao's statement. The seller asks the guy to leave his guesses and decide whether to buy the stone or not. The guy explains that he plans to buy, but not the proposed stone, Han Hao notices that everyone knows about the dirty tricks, but no one exposes them, because trouble might arise. Han Hao continues to choose a stone, saying that the man will not be able to deceive it. The guy takes out one stone with the desire to buy it. The man was outraged that the guy didn't choose stones, but looked at the price for himself. The guy with a grin declares that the money will appear after the man sawed this stone. The whole crowd comes to watch the newcomer's stone being cut, everyone discusses Han Hao's inexperience and naivety. Han Hao looks at the cut of the stone with a grin, because he knew what was inside. The stone turned out to be completely filled with jade, no one could believe what they saw, because it was a very expensive specimen. The girl supported Han Hao for his luck, an unknown man also approached the guy. The man wanted to buy the Han Hao stone for 200,000 yuan. The girl was amazed that Han Hao was offering 200,000 for such a small pebble, Han Hao didn't know what to answer. At that moment, a guy's voice came from behind the man, he explained that Mr. Lee was not acting honorably. The guy explains that a stone of this quality costs at least 500,000 yuan, the man began to get very nervous. The man with a frightened face adds that he just wanted to offer 500,000 for this copy. Mr. Li transfers funds to the guy's card, which Han Hao notices. Han Hao shows respect and thanks the guy, but in his thoughts he already knew that the stone was worth more than 200,000 yuan, the guy asks not to thank him, because he has long been infuriated by such personnel profiting from newcomers. With a laugh, Han Hao adds that the man he bought from was just one of those, the guy clarifies that Han Hao knew everything, but still bought the stone. Han Hao dismisses this as intuition and his extraordinary luck. The guy invites Han Hao to look at a couple more unusual stones and test his intuition, Han Hao agrees with the guy. There were other stones on the table, but more expensive ones. Han Hao also notes that these are quite good stones, but he planned to select the best one. Han Hao stops at the stone in the middle, 
assuming that it is the most expensive one. The guy observes a large accumulation of jade inside the stone, which will cost at least 2 million. The guy asks to provide him with the selected stone for cutting. The girl reminds him that he has 300,000 yuan, specifying the payment method, by card or cash. The guy holds Hanhao by the shoulder and asks his friend not to worry, because he will pay for everything himself. Han Hao already understood that all the money would be in his pocket. Everyone watching was amazed that Han Hao was again able to find out where the jade was, which was still so expensive. One of the men offers to sell him a stone for 2,300,000 yuan. Han Hao agrees to sell the stone to the man, but the guy also adds that he is selling the stone. Han Hao reminds him that this is his stone, the guy doesn't quite understand what we're talking about, because he bought the stone with his own money. The guy with a grin reminds that it was he who paid the money to buy the stone and therefore his money, the girl returns and gives the guy's card. Gritting his teeth, Han Hao adds that if the stone had been empty, he would have paid, and if it had jade, he would have taken it. Han Hao notices that the guy made good money, not wanting to continue listening to Han Hao, he leaves saying that he also needs to attend the auction. The whole crowd begins to mock Han Hao, because he was scammed out of money. The girl asks Han Hao if he is okay, but the guy starts grinning, because he was scammed. Han Hao planned to play more stone games with Li until the end. Mr. Li is heading to the auction, because it is about to start any minute, several guards accompany the man. The girl at the entrance informs Han Hao that to participate in the auction you need to make a deposit of 2 million yuan. Ma Jie doesn't understand why so much money is needed, at this moment, Han Hao was wondering where he could get 2 million yuan. The guy comes up with a plan and asks the girl to follow him, Maud silently goes after Han Hao. The girl at the entrance doesn't understand why this is a matter of minutes for a guy, because the amount is not small. At that moment, in the hall where the stone games were taking place, another stone was cut. The man was puzzled by what he saw inside his stone. There was nothing in the stone, it was completely empty, the person who sawed the stone explained that this happens quite often. The man takes his head and assumes that stone games are not for him at all, because in three times he could not win anything. At this moment, Han Hao comes in and asks everyone to disperse, because he came back to play stone games. The guy asks that all the stones he is currently holding be cut down. The whole crowd was unhappy, because they also wanted to participate in the stone games. The man who lost three times before yells at Han Hao, reminding that this is not a market, but stone games where people are looking for jade, Han Hao does not pay attention to him, but says that he bought these stones for 500,000 yuan. The man was very upset, he understood that it was impossible to get rich in stone games, after all, if it were so easy, then why do all people go bankrupt? After cutting the Han Hao stone, the man was surprised that there was jade inside. This was already the fourth stone that Han Hao sawed and it turned out to contain jade. Han Hao asked that absolutely all the stones be cut for him, jade was found in each of them, which greatly amazed the crowd. The man could not understand how Han Hao knew where the jade was every time, the man wanted to know where the guy came from. Han Ho decides to invite everyone to buy jade, and Ma Jia asks to accept money, the girl couldn't even imagine how much money they would have now. The crowd of the same players was very unhappy with that, that the beginner is lucky, many have gone bankrupt because of stone games. Another part of the crowd admired such luck and wanted to buy jade from Han Ho. The guy presented all his goods with a smile and asked to approach him one by one. On the Han Ho card, anyone could purchase a jade stone. In the end, Han Hao sells all his stones and earns 4 million yuan. The girl was interested in how Han Hao always knew where the jade was, Han Hao decided to ask again with a smile if the girl was sure that she wanted to know how he guessed. The girl loudly declares that she really wants to know how exactly he manages to do this. The man, who had already lost several times before, was inspired to learn from Han Hao his secret of success, the guy did not understand at all who this man was and what he wanted from him. The man holds Han Hao by the shoulders and asks him to teach him stone games, Han Hao agrees, but first asks to let him go. The guy figures out how he can explain the secret of success, Han Ho explains that you don't need to look at the appearance of the stone, but just close your eyes and feel the heart chakra, the man listens carefully to the guy and accepts this as the truth. The man closes his eyes and tries to feel the very chakra of the stone, Han Hao explains that he needs to calm down and catch the particles of jade energy. 
Han Hao slowly walks away while the man stands with his eyes closed and tries to feel something. The guy returns to the desired floor, because in addition to the auction they needed to look at one more place. Han Hao explains to the girl with a smile that this is why this method is secret, that no one knows it. The girl clarifies why they are walking near the store, because they need to go to an auction. The guy reminds her that he already promised the girl to go shopping, the girl looks closely at the store window. After visiting one of the stores, Han Hao states that Ma Jie can buy any clothes to his taste. The girl chose several outfits and went to the fitting room, Han Hao asks if the girl has finished preparing. The girl pulls back the curtain and shows herself standing in heels. The guy was surprised how beautiful a girl can be in a dress. Han Hao's opinion, she was worried whether he liked the way she looked now. The guy was very embarrassed, because he didn't know how to highlight the girl's beauty, Han Hua simply replies that Ma Jie is very beautiful. The guy looks away in embarrassment, because he never would have thought that his girlfriend had such a beautiful figure, he was used to seeing a girl in ordinary, everyday clothes, unremarkable. In Han Ho's head where a girl in ordinary clothes is standing opposite him. The guy continues to plunge into thoughts and embarrassment, he adds that the girl has grown up a long time ago, Han Ho was just now beginning to realize that they had become very close during this time. The couple returns to the auction entrance, the girl was amazed that the guy was already able to collect the required amount. Walking inside, the couple hears that it is planned to draw the last three lots for today. The person conducting the auction notices that several more new guests have arrived, the man reminds that only stones from stone games are raffled off at the auction. The guy notices that he doesn't need to inspect the stones, he can tell with just one eye what is trash and what is worth real money. The man conducting the auction thinks that the guy is joking quite well, inviting him to take an empty seat in the hall, Han Ho also helps his girlfriend sit next to him. The man puts up a new lot number 131, the starting price of which is 500,000 yuan. All the people start shouting different numbers and interrupting each other, Li asks Master Wu what they should do with the stone. With a grin, the guy notices that the stones with jade inside come in different hardnesses and therefore are difficult to distinguish. The guy decides to turn to Han Hao and find out why he doesn't raise his price, because that's what they came to the auction for. Han Ho explains that due to the deep crack, he is not going to place a bet. The guy was surprised, because he didn't even pay attention to such a crack. The man standing on the stage announces the winner, and also announces the next lot, number 251, the starting price is 800,000 yuan. Master Wu notes that this stone was covered in scratches and would definitely not be sold at a high price, the guy sitting next to him thinks that they won't be able to buy anything this year. At this point, Han Hao still decide to make their bet, the rate was 1,800,000 yuan. The guy thought he had decided to buy this stone, the man on stage makes a report, after which lot number 251 goes to Han Hao. Han Hao decides to shout that he is ready to open this stone in front of everyone, the man on stage decides to invite his workers to open the stone and show it to the people. The Han Hao stone is currently being sawed. Having cut the stone in half, the man notices that it is ice jade and it was absolutely pure without any impurities. Master Wu could not believe what he saw, because the stone costs at least 10 million yuan, the guy couldn't understand how Han Hao kept guessing. The man decides to present the last lot, number 378, the starting bid of which is 2,300,000 yuan, the stone was quite weighty. Everyone in the hall immediately began to raise their hands and try to interrupt each other. Master Wu believes that any price not exceeding 8 million is acceptable to them, the guy agrees with his master. Han Hao decides to raise the price to 3,500,000 yuan. The guy immediately began to interrupt, the guy notes that most likely Han Hao again knows what is in the stone. Han Hao again raises the price to 4 million, the man on stage notes that Han Hao has enough assets to continue participating in the lot, despite the fact that he has a rather expensive stone. The man adds that Han Hao no longer has the right to take part in the auction and add prices. Han Hao will clarify whether he can continue to participate in the auction if he proves that he has a lot of assets. Han Hao gets up from his table and adds that he arrived today with a small amount for fun. The guy claims that he has a villa in the Huangxiu district and that it is worth more than 100 million and is one of his many assets. Han Hao asks to stop disgracing him in front of his beloved girl, because he always achieves what he wants. The girl was embarrassed that the guy would say such things. The guy sitting with Master Wu was also surprised, 
because Han Hao looked more like a hillbilly without any money. Master Wu learns from his people that a couple of minutes ago the guy opened a dozen stones and all of them contained jade, the guy sitting next to him was also surprised. The man on stage apologizes and also takes into account his 4,200,000 yuan bid. People continued to try to outbid Han Hao, with a serious face the guy adds that he always achieves what he wants. Han Hao stood up from the table and said that this stone would be the best decoration for his girlfriend, so the guy bets 100 million yuan. The whole hall fell silent, no one could believe that the guy was ready to give a hundred million for a stone. The man on stage begins the countdown to the end of the lot. The guy sitting next to Master Wu raises his number, calling out a bet of 100 million 500,000 yuan. Master Wu declares that one cannot bet so much money, the guy claims that since Han Hao often guesses right, it's still worth interrupting him. The guy tried to humiliate Han Hao in front of everyone, because this is unacceptable. Han Hao, not wanting to stop, raises the bet to 120 million yuan. The guy, without admitting defeat, also raises the bet to 120 million 500,000 yuan. Han Hao was of little interest to the guy's wishes, he wanted to knock all these assets out of him, so you raise the bet by another 140 million yuan. With a sneer, the guy doesn't want to stop, he makes the last bet of 150 million yuan. With a smirk Han Hao sits down on a chair in size, because his plan worked and the guy turned out to be much stupider than he thought. The countdown comes to an end and the lot goes to the guy, he mocks Han Hao's defeat, because he could not outbid his bet. Han Hao adds with a bit of irony that for him, Mr. Wong turned out to be much stronger and he could not cope with him. Han Hao also suggests opening the stone and finding out what was inside. The guy declares that he will not be scared by such statements and is ready to open the stone right on stage. The guy begins to suspect that something is fishy here, because Han Hao gave up too easily. After finishing the cutting, everyone was very upset by what they saw, because there was nothing inside. After the end of the last lot, all the people slowly headed towards the exit, the man on stage announced the end of the auction. Han Hao decides to approach the guy, calling the stone promising, but also adds that besides Mr. Wong himself, no one is to blame. The guy understands that Han Hao will do this on purpose and set him up with the purchase of the stone. Han Hao pretends that he doesn't understand what he's talking about, because all the failure lies on the guy's shoulders, Han Hao also thanks the guy for his outstretched hand, because if it weren't for him, Han Hao himself would have gone bankrupt. Han Hao decides to give the guy his stone as gratitude, the guy does not believe that Han Hao wants to help him. Han Hao declares that he does not need meaningless enmity, holding out the stone with a smile, the guy does not believe in Han Hao's good intentions, but still decides to reach out to the stone. Han Hao pretends to accidentally drop a stone, from which it immediately breaks into pieces and all the jade becomes unusable. Han Hao explains that it was quite a pity, because approximately 100 million yuan were stored in this stone, but he doesn't care. Han Hao hopes that the guy is not offended by him, because all the jade is on the floor and it is not difficult for Mr. Wang to collect it from the floor. Han Hao says goodbye to the guy and reminds him that he didn't mind giving the guy a stone for 300,000 yuan. The guy was very angry at Han Hao's actions, he was going to be humiliated in the future. At this moment, the guy takes some strange stone into his mouth and swallows it. The guy pushes off the floor and quickly moves towards Han Hao. The girl notices Wang running and asks Han Hao to react. At the last moment, Han Hao notices how the same guy is approaching his back, trying to take revenge. The guy strikes in the back, but Han Hao manages to block the blow with his shoulder. Han Hao notes that this is not human strength and he used something for immortals. The system notices that it was a life energy pill and in an instant he can concentrate all of a person's life force into a strike, Han Hao falls to the ground from such a blow. The guy angrily tries to deliver another similar blow, concentrating all the force in his fist. The girl decides to stand opposite Han Hao, blocking him with her body, the girl was afraid that Han Hao might die. Han Hao holds his side, they add, the guy asks the girl to leave due to serious danger. The girl reminds that it was the guy who first deceived them, Han Hao did this so that the guy could feel all the pain. The guy doesn't know what to answer the girl in this one, silently lowering his head, he was greatly disappointed. The girl stood opposite the guy, which made him very embarrassed. The guy looked down and saw the girl's figure, this began to confuse him even more. The guy embarrassedly knelt down and didn't know what to do next. Through force, Han Hao managed to get to his feet and blocked the girl with his body, 
he clarified whether everything was okay with the girl. Han Hao was very angry at the guy's actions, the system noticed that life energy had ceased to be concentrated in the tablet and the guy began to gradually lose his immortal power. The guy doesn't understand why his nose started bleeding, the system adds that he does not know how the side effect of the pill works. Han Hao declares that even if there is even the slightest danger for his girlfriend, he will not let her be offended, Mods looks at Han Ho with loving eyes. Han Hao begins to flex his fists, saying that now it's his turn to have some fun. A man who was selling stones for games, he tried to continue to deceive everyone about the authenticity of his goods. The man invited his next customer to try his luck. But at this moment Mr. Wong flies towards him, completely beaten, which greatly repels the buyer. Mr. Wong falls right on top of the man, he doesn't understand where he came from. Come to this man and introduce themselves as security, they suspect that the man is cheating and selling fake stones during stone games. A man who has lost three times in a row before confirms that he is a fraudster and is ready to act as a witness. The man states that he sat and looked at the stones through his chakra all day and saw nothing in them, so he is definitely a deceiver. The security was amazed to hear, she didn't really understand what exactly the guy was trying to say, they still asked that guy to come and testify. At this moment, an unknown man in the office receives notification that their stone games have been curtailed. The man hits the table with his hand because he understood because of whom this was all happening. The man wonders if this guy is really to blame, the man is outraged that some guy can invade his territory. Out of anger, the man squeezes the glass, causing it to simply burst and all the wine spills on the table. Han Hao thinks they taught this guy a good lesson, the girl notices that the guy has changed a lot. From Han Hao he explains that he simply didn't show this before, he was always like this. The girl remembers what the guy was like at the auction, Han Hao clarifies what exactly Mods is talking about. The girl is trying to hint that the guy said something about her when he shouted. The guy can't remember what exactly he said at that moment, he's trying to find out from the girl. The guy assumes that the girl wants to get that same jade, he assumes that he can buy it next time. The guy with a smile offers to come up with something together next time, at this moment a call comes to his phone. The guy apologizes because he needs to take on a challenge, the girl was confused by what he said, she did not fully understand what the guy meant by the word together. The guy looks at the phone number but doesn't dare answer right away. The girl clarifies who exactly called him, his aunt explains that they left earlier this time because something didn't fit and she was very unhappy. The girl is still trying to find out what exactly the guy meant by the word together. The guy shouts with his head raised that he finally remembered, the girl doesn't understand what exactly the guy could remember. He looks at the girl by the shoulders and in the eyes. The guy looks straight into the girl's face and asks her to definitely say yes to him. The girl was very embarrassed, her face turned red, she understood where all this was going. The guy asks the girl to let him look at her term paper, at which point the girl's face droops. The guy just now remembered that the first day of school starts tomorrow and he didn't do anything at all, the girl could not believe what she heard because she expected something different. She sighs with a smile and you understand that he didn't mean it at all. The guy offers to go shopping again next time and this time buy the girl some jade, the girl now understands what we are talking about and what place he was talking about, she refuses the offer and they slowly head home. The next day, Han Hao and Moji went to Qingshui University. The guy had a Moji backpack hanging on his shoulders. All the girls looked at each other and looked at the couple. Moji, walking behind the guy, tried to persuade him to give him his backpack because she could carry it herself. The guy says with a smile that if it weren't for her, he wouldn't have done his homework, so he is obliged to help her. A yellow luxury car stops in front of the university. This is not the least bit surprising, he silently lets the car pass by. Han Hao looks at who exactly is getting out of this car because the person inside was trying to attract his attention. It was his former classmate who greeted Han Hao, says in confusion that they haven't seen each other for a long time and is glad to see him, Han Hao reminds me that they saw each other yesterday. Han Hao he hears a car rushing behind him. Han Hao manages to grab the guy by the tie and drag him away from his car. The car rushing behind Han Hao crashes into the car of his classmate, after which they silently look at him. The guy couldn't believe that his car was mutilated, Han Hao was ready to take revenge for this. The guy getting out of the car calls the car a J.O. bucket and there is no place for such a car in the parking lot. The guy was outraged because his car was damaged, he doesn't understand why he allows himself to do this. The guy leans towards J.O., 
he believes that he is in the way. Zhao it is stated that he is sulking because his family took away his entire business, the guy declares that the business owned by the Ju family cannot be lost from his. The guy, expecting something more, invites Jao to hit himself, he, s sure the guy doesn't have the guts to do it. Gao Hao puts his hand on his shoulder and squeezes it out, he doesn't understand what the guy wants to do. Han Hao asks the guy to move away because he crushed his briefcase. There was a pink briefcase under the guy's car. The guy states that if he needs a briefcase, he can move his car himself. Honey House agrees, heading towards the car, everyone else decides to watch this. The guy kicks the car, which greatly shocks the others. Such an impact pushes the car to the side, making the backpack accessible. Han Ha lies down next to him and takes out his backpack with his hand. Han Ha falls at the guy's feet with the statement that he offends poor students. The guy demands that Han Hao stop because it's not appropriate for people to pretend to be poor in broad daylight. Han Hao steps out of character for a second and shows a thumbs up to his classmate, I confirm that everything is under control. Zhao and the girl were at a loss as to what Han Hao was doing now. The whole crowd pays attention, how Han Hao shouts to the whole university that the rich guy crashed his car and now he also hits him. The guy demands that he let go of his leg and stop playing the fool, I hit the guy and start screaming back. Ju and the girl understand Han Hao's plan and decide to start photographing everything that is happening, Han Hao continues to pretend that he is in pain. Zhao shows that everything is going well according to plan and continues to shoot the video. The guy indignantly declares that they are trying to set him up and this is not appropriate. Han Hao explains that since he behaves, they decided to lead with him and such garbage can only be explained by such methods. The guy noticed that Han Hao began to flex his fists, he reminds that his father is a member of the school's board and has connections with the rectors, so Han Hao shouldn't joke like that. Han Hao pretends that he is scared that the guy announced his father's position. Without waiting for an answer from the guy, Han Hao charges his fist into the guy's face, he adds that he is not scared at all. Han Hao also adds that the guy will have to pay for treatment and repairs to the car, otherwise this video will be all over the university. On the same day, a council was held and, taking into account the above, everyone came to a unanimous decision to punish the student so that this would serve as a lesson for everyone. The man reminds that Han Hao for causing damage to the property of another student, as well as causing serious crimes, will be punished by expulsion from the university. Everyone present did not really understand what was happening, many supported Han Hao, because the father of that same major was reading the advice and it was clear that he was to blame. Han Ha notes with a sigh that it is so obvious to all of us that the guy started it first. Han Ha demands that the guy provide at least some evidence of his beating. The man declares that he personally knows Ian and knows him better than anyone else, because the guy is an obedient student and he is not able to harm anyone. And another person sitting next to him on the stage confirms his words. The man was outraged that the guy was demanding proof, the man believed that since the guy was currently in the hospital, this was indisputable evidence. The man asks who allowed the Han Ha to get up from his seat and demands that he come back. Han Hao explains that Yang crashed into his friend's car and was the first to start a fight and also threatened that his father is a member of the university board. With a grin, Han Ha takes out his phone and adds that he has video evidence. Everyone abruptly begins to whisper, many of the students have already seen this video. The man gets up from the table and declares that Han Hao is violating discipline and does not care about the rules of the university and is also trying to slander an innocent person. The guy addresses the students, is it right that a poor student can become a punching bag for the rich? The man calls him a little asshole and also believes that he is talking nonsense and that he will not get away with just expulsion. Han Hao notices that the man is trying to threaten him and that it is better not to study with such leaders at all. All the students begin to shout and criticize the words of the council member and also call the rector worthless. The rector was perplexed by the man's words. The man demands that the rector stop looking at him like that because everything happened because the man got angry. At this moment the elder comes in and asks what the noise is going on. The elder is interested in what happened at the moment. The rector gets up from the table and greets Mr., whether the man again asks why everyone is swearing. The rector holds his head and doesn't know where to start. Han Hao supports the screaming crowd, all the students were unhappy with the rector's decision. The rector declares that the ceremony for the beginning of the academic semester is over, Han Hao needs to go to his office. Han Hao turns towards the rector with a smile, 
The elder is interested in who Han Hao is, the rector asks to go with him and deal with the stubborn boy. Elder Li was interested in this discussion. In the rector's office, the man asks Han Hao to listen to him carefully, he demands a public apology from the guy and that it was he who organized the entire balagan. The reactor begins to threaten that he has leverage and can calmly use it against the guy. Han Haozir declares that the guy got what he deserved and he hit him for a reason. The council member believes that the guy needs to be taught a lesson. Han Ha decides to use his X-ray injection amulet and notices that the man is completely harmless and does not seek immortality. Han Hao understands that the only advantage of a man is his combat skill. Han Ho reminds that the man was actually looking for an excuse to expel the Chao and that their families have been competing with each other for a long time, so it was the man who told the guy to crash into Zhao's car. The guy understood that everything was happening for a reason and because he intervened the plan went downhill. Elderly pays attention to Han Hao's words. The man moves his hand away and declares that this is all pure slander. Han Ha mockingly states that he understood this from the man's surprised face. The man could no longer tolerate insults directed at himself and decides to use martial arts. Han Ha also did not want to be on the sidelines and decides to respond to the fight. The man and Han Ha hit each other with their palms and there is a small burst of force. With a grin from Han Ha states that the man forgot to eat porridge in the morning or that his body is too decrepit. The man could not bear such an insult and he did not understand why his stone pendant could not defeat the guy. Han Ha silently takes the man's hand. After which, with a slight movement of his hand, he turns out something that makes his hands crunch. The man begins to shake in pain because his arm was dislocated with a little ridicule and asks if everything is okay, he didn't want to overdo it with him. The man was even more angry and said that next time he would take revenge and finish the guy off. The man attacks the Haniho, trying to hit his face, but the guy manages to dodge. The system notices that the man is trying to attack Han Hao with inner strength and is most likely emitting a chaos technique. The guy already understood this, you noticed that the system could have said this before. The man's hand was already near the guy's face, but he turned away once again. And the man about my stepping aside. The man also noticed that his strength was scattered and he did not understand what exactly Han Hao had done. The man has lost his strength and falls exhausted to the ground in a high house with his hands in his pockets and looks at him. The elder decides not to interfere in any way and simply watch what is happening. Han Hao is dying because he had to take this blow and he doesn't know what could have happened if he hadn't done it. The system notes that the most he could do was scratch Han Hao. The man believes that Han Hao was again deceived by his boyfriend, not wanting to continue communicating with him, he simply sends him away and leaves towards the door. The rector noticed that the man was not as strong as he said and he was ashamed that some young man could defeat him. And yet he also decides to teach a lesson and the man did not understand what the rector was talking about. Han Hao reminds that the rector used his official position to help his friends with dirty deeds. The man demands that the guy leave his office and never return. Elderly places his glass on the table and demands that they end with this. The man gets up from the table and adds that the rector threw some kind of hysteria in the office. The rector runs up to Mr. Lee and asks him not to pay attention to what is happening because he is simply lying. The rector, sweating, tries to explain to the elder that he never handed over the reconstruction work to his relatives. Han Hao notices that this is not what he meant, but that the rector is fleecing all the students for money and he could not even think that he was doing something worse. The rector is trying to justify himself to the elders whether this did not happen and he should listen to him, but he believes that this is no longer necessary. The man reminds that he is the largest investor of this university and is very grateful for the help provided by Han Hao. The man looked angrily at the leader and added that he could continue to be in all this ignorance with a bunch of parasites. Without waiting for the reactor's response, the man closes the door behind him. With a grin, he also heads towards the exit, noting that he is pleased that someone is behind him. Han Hao falls onto his bed and notices that he is very tired, the system thinks it's too early to go to bed. Han Hao is interested in his system, what else should he do? After all, he was expelled from the university. Han Hao adds that since he was expelled from the university, he has nowhere to go tomorrow and therefore he has time to rest. The system reminds him that he needs to seek immortality, I notice that it's already the 15th chapter, he still hasn't practiced on his own. The system adds that he needs to practice and engage in self-development and improve every day, not wanting to continue listening to Hai Hao, he agrees with the system. 
Han Hao decides to focus and immerse himself in the study of immortality. He sits on the floor and tries to meditate, concentrating his strength. The system supports the guy and says that this is much better because he begins to concentrate all his energy and circulate throughout his body. The guy closes his eyes and immerses himself in meditation. The guy falls asleep during meditation and wakes up after an indefinite time. The guy slept well and notices that it was already dawn, Han Hao didn't understand at what moment he fell asleep. The guy noticed that he became a little stronger and felt much better. The system notices that if the guy continues to put more effort into self-improvement, he will become much stronger and reach a completely new level. The system adds that the guy should study the first volume of chaos technology, this will be enough for him to reach the end of the superhuman level, in the future, he can buy everything for immortality points. The guy notices that finding immortality points was not as easy as what the system said earlier. The system believes that one cannot compare the study of chaos technology with an ordinary office platoon, since here one obtains much more serious knowledge and the ultimate goal of those seeking immortality is to achieve the level of absolute enlightenment. The guy is trying to get to his feet, noticing that he did not plan to achieve absolute enlightenment, I am practicing. The guy shouts to the whole villa that he plans to achieve free creation and so that he can do absolutely whatever he wants. The guy goes out onto the balcony and flies up in the air above his villa, he observes an unknown man approaching the house. The guy pays attention to the man and watches him wave his hand, was it the elder who greeted the guy? After all, he had something to do. Han Hao invites the elder into the house, the man wonders if the guy was practicing himself in the villa now. The man wonders if the guy has moved from the superhuman level to the level of soul awareness. With a smile, the guy declares that he is still on a superhuman level. The guy clarifies what business the elder came to his villa for. The man with a grin declares that he didn't come to tell anything special, but just to notify that he solved yesterday's problem and the rector has already been removed. With a laugh, the elder adds that the guy can now walk as usual in class. The guy keeps up the conversation and thanks the elder. The man remembers that another head of the council tried to attack the guy. The elder adds that the guy should be more careful after yesterday, if he has any other problems, he should contact him. Lost in thought Han Hao confirms that he will be more careful while at the university. At that moment, an unknown man was sitting in a dark room, the man wonders why his subordinate failed to teach the guy a lesson because he wanted to find out what he was capable of. The man was beaten and had a cast on his right arm, he could not say anything more. An unknown person asks how good the Henko was. The man explains that none of his techniques had any effect on the guy and he could not defeat him. The man kneels down and demands that his boss help him since Han Hao also beat his son. The man silently exhales the smoke from his cigarette. Throwing cigarettes into the ashtray, the unknown person adds that for the stone wings, for other aspects of the Henko, you will already have to pay the bills. The man asks if the pill his boss is talking about is the one that he originally had. Unknown explains that this pill was taken from one of their couriers and is located in a honku, but due to the fact that they made a lot of noise they had to temporarily suspend the search. The unknown person demands that the man contact Mr. Wu without mentioning him and order killers to kill the kanks. But before that, the unknown person asks the man to find out where the pill is. Han Ho is walking around the city. There was a phone in his hand, he was talking to Moji and wondering what happened to her. The girl wonders if the guy is going to return to university because his expulsions have been cancelled. The guy explains that he won't come today because he has other things to do. The guy with a grin explains that he is not expelled every day and therefore he will pretend that he did not know this and will come tomorrow. Haircut was sitting in the room, he looked askance at the incoming Han Ho. Another unknown man sitting at the table was also watching the incoming Hang Kao. The guy finishes talking on the phone and says goodbye to the girl. Han Ho asks for one glass of lemonade but without lemon, to which the waiter asks to wait a little. The guy pretends that he didn't notice anything and is just waiting for his lemonade. At this moment, he carefully tries to look around and consider all the suspicious individuals. There was complete silence in the hall, Hai Ho continued to wait for his drink. The waiter brings the guy's order, to which Han Ho thanks him. Han Ho extends his hand to the waiter, but at the moment stopping his hand seemed strange to him. The guy noticed a strange moment because the waiter didn't even ask if he needed to sweeten it or add ice. Not wanting to reveal everything, he clarifies whether he previously worked in this establishment, under the bar counter at that moment there was a real waiter, she was tied up. 
The guy had something sparkling red in his sleeve and the waiter started grinning, into Hanho's face, which he immediately noticed. The guy manages to dodge the waiter, who calmly continued to stand opposite him. It seemed to the guy that he had disguised himself quite competently and would not arouse any suspicion. Honey ho they add that since the guy made a rather terrible lemonade, this made him doubt him even more. The guy also noticed a rather scary man with green hair reading a newspaper. And also two more thugs who endlessly stirred sugar, which was quite suspicious. Han Ho wonders why they were waiting for him in this establishment. The guy takes off his hat because they were revealed. All four guys became one and called the Golden, Wooden, Water and Fiery Four Brothers. With a grin, the older ones add that one person bought a contract for his life. Hai Ho clarifies whether he was really ordered from A, which immediately receives an approving answer. Han Ho states that he is quite weak and he does not understand why he was attacked. Han Ho covers his face and asks, at least before he dies, to tell them who ordered it. The gang leader states that their professional ethics do not allow spreading the name of the customer, the green-haired guy lets it slip and says that he himself doesn't know who exactly ordered them. Han Ho wonders who exactly their boss is. One of the attackers declares that the horse how cannot know who their boss is, the green-haired man blurts out calling him Mr. You. After this, the gang leader beats him and demands that he shut up, the green-haired one tries to apologize to him. Han Ho tries to remember who he heard with a similar name. The leader says that it doesn't matter because the time of his death has come. Honey how, without leaving my role, I continue to make an innocent face and ask for mercy. Not wanting to listen anymore, the leader believes that he is deceiving them, he is an unusual person. The leader releases a large number of shuriken, leaving no chance of saving the Hulk. How didn't think that they could declassify his perfect acting. Han Ha continues to dodge numerous streams of shuriken. Han Ha notes that the guy's aim is off, to which he replies with a grin that he wasn't aiming at him at all. Han Hao manages to raise his head and sees something strange. All the shurikens were around him and surrounded him. He could not get out, after all, they created a kind of grid. Han Hao was completely surrounded and one of the brothers asked the others to attack him. The guy in the hood offers Honey how to evaluate its high-quality craft superglue. Han Hao's legs were stuck to the floor, he didn't understand what to do in this situation. The remaining guys decided to finish off the Hai Hao with alcohol and a fire whirlwind. Both guys set fire and throw strange things with fire at him. Unable to resist, Han Hao silently watched the Molotovs flying at him. Bari watches as several explosives fly towards his head. The guy smirks, calling it a pathetic combo attack. Han Ha decides to stick his feet out of his stuck boots. He soars sharply above the ground and rushes upward to catch a strange explosive substance. At the last moment, Honey Hill manages to catch all the bottles without breaking a single one. The men could not understand how he managed it, after all, this is the first time they have seen such a high jump. Han Ha reminds the shadow not to relax and watch his every move. Han Hao throws an explosive substance at a gang of mercenaries, for some reason it breaks and coats them all. One of the brothers does not have time to put out the lighter at the last moment. The guys notice how flames appear around them due to the liquid. One of the eldest among the whole gang manages to jump away, he watches as the others burn. At this moment, Han Hao appears behind him, which greatly amazes him. Han Hao clarifies whether this blade belongs to his boss. The guy understands that this is the same knife that belongs to Mr. Wu for exterminating the immortals. One of the bandits is trying to understand where the guy got Mr. Wu's sword, Han Hao asks them the same question. Han Ha decides not to end there and takes absolutely all the mercenaries' shurikens. Having taken all the threads with shurikens, he begins to spin them above his head. After which, with a sharp movement of his hand, he throws him towards the mercenaries. One of the mercenaries was confused about what to do next. All the shurikens and thorns were launched straight into the crowd. The clothes on the pink-haired girl began to slowly tear. Han Hao notes that he was planning to achieve a similar effect. The rest of the mercenaries were amazed by the appearance of their so-called brother. Han Ha silently looks at the girl. The girl says that this is not a reason to be happy because he hasn't won yet. The girl declares that she will detain the guy while they need to contact Mr. Wu. Looking around, she does not see a single mercenary who came with her. All the mercenaries stood in front of Han Hao, they planned to attack him with all their might. The girl, through her tears, was glad that they stood up for her. At this moment, Honey Hao appears behind the girl's back and asks if they forgot to ask his permission. The girl turned around in fear and found the guy behind her. 
All the mercenaries immediately rush to Han Hao, they demanded that the girl leave. The mercenary asks to save her from Han Hao. Han Hao is already tired of this kind of entertainment and decides to end it. With one blow, he takes all four mercenaries out into the street. The girl lays soullessly on the ground, from which the guy comes up and covers her with his jacket. Han Hao calls the police and asks them to solve the problem with the robbers lying on the street. The guy explains to the police that he has already pacified the robbers, they just need to detain them because they completely destroyed the store. After time, a reporter comes and tries to interview Han Hao, after all, everyone was wondering how he was able to cope with the robbers. Han Hao tries to refuse the interview because he was not interested. Han Hao suggests just taking a photo and leaving it at that. The guy clarifies that he needs to take a photo in which he will be more handsome. On the first cover of the newspaper, the guy was quite scary and gloomy. An unknown person hits his image with his fist. The man was dissatisfied that his mercenaries could not cope, because for the first time he saw someone trying to resist the power of Mr. Wu. The head of the university committee is trying to reassure his master, because the first one is nothing of himself. The unknown person begins to doubt and assume that the guy was originally Mr. W's man. The man suggests forgetting this guy for a while and moving on to more important things, unknown people demand that he leave his office. The angry man goes to the exit, he was not happy with this situation. The next day, Han Hao went to meet his friend Zhao. The guy invites Han Hao to sit down at the same table and discuss important matters. Han Hao wonders why Zhao has become so polite to him, Zhao explains this as a courtesy after the incident with Yen Bin. The guy is glad that he has such a friend who stood up for him, Zhao therefore decided to thank Han Hao. Han Hao was surprised that Zhao decided to thank him, the guy asks if Han Hao is interested in running her own business. Zhao offers to take over the management of the karaoke bar, offering his money in the guy valuable personnel. Han Hao was amazed at this proposal. The guy notices that the karaoke bar is close enough to his university and this is a good deal, after analyzing all the options, Han Hao decides to agree with the proposal. Zhao notes that it was not for nothing that he called Han Hao his brother. Han Hao adds that all the formalities are on the guy, with which Zhao immediately agrees, they clink glasses for a new beginning. Having finished a business meeting and having eaten until he drops, the guy barely gets to the villa. Without further ado, Han Hao returns to the room and collapses on the bed. The system reminds the guy to practice, which makes Han Hao jump out of bed in fear. The system issues a task to upgrade chaos equipment to the second level. The guy believes that this mission looks like a bribe and that such tricks will not work on a person. With a grin, the guy sits in a meditation pose, noting that he will quickly earn immortality points. In the morning the guy again lies on the floor, sleepy. The guy wakes up with difficulty and opens his eyes. Han Hao goes out onto the balcony quite exhausted, he begins to get angry that he constantly falls asleep during practice. The system, lying in his bed, notices that the guy constantly falls asleep during meditation due to his weakness. The guy was very exhausted after a night of meditation and he had no idea how to practice in the future. Han Hao thinks it is too difficult for him to train, the system is to notice that he actually fits very well and he sleeps soundly. At this moment, the guy's phone receives a call, it was Jao. Han Hao wonders what the matter is, to which Zhao shouts into the phone to quickly come to him. Han Hao, without having time to reach an agreement with Zhao over the phone, assumes that he is in a great hurry to open a new business. Han Hao quickly arrives at the karaoke bar. Standing at the door, the Han Hao peers without observing the Jao. Han Ha hears glass breaking behind him. The guy couldn't understand what was happening at the moment because he was all alone in the building. At this moment, a man from the head of the college and an elderly master enter the building. Han Ha was amazed by such a meeting, he could not understand what they were doing in this place. The guy notices a ponytail on the head of an elderly man. The guy compares it to a desert island, which makes him laugh very much. The head screams that this is a master who is capable of defeating Han Hao. The guy declares that he doesn't understand why he brought the old man and offers to fight him. The elderly man states that Han Hao does not know him at all. People who came to the noise notice the master and calls him Zhang Bai, they really wanted to see the fight between the master and the guy. The master self-confidently asks the guy to admit his mistake and kneel in front of them. Han Hao clarifies what exactly this master is known for, I assume that he is an ordinary fraudster. This made the elderly man very angry which is why he changed his face. The man was very angry and he slowly approached the guy, 
the master could not stand such insults. The master finds himself next to Hanha and then makes a sharp swing trying to intimidate the guy. The guy notices the curtain is quite powerful and this could be disastrous for him. This time the master decides to fully swing and try to hit the guy, but Hanha manages to dodge. The man suddenly changes the trajectory of his hand and tries to strike down. From such a blow, Hanhao has to stand on his hands and jump back. The elderly man's blow hits the floor, causing it to crack into small pieces, Hanha decides to keep his distance to study his opponent. The man himself did not understand how the guy managed to avoid his signature blow. Hanhao notices that he finally sees the result of his training and that all this was not in vain. Putting his hands in his pockets, the guy believes that the master is not as dangerous as he seemed at first glance. The master still thinks that he underestimates him, and in response, I throw several point stones. The master calls this his own technique of piercing points, the man adds that thanks to this technique, he makes the organ suffer from pain, honey how begins to shake. The guy realizes that his body is numb and he feels every pain, the system offers the guy to use the chaos technique to defeat the men. The elderly man believes that the guy completely underestimates his rivals. Han Hao tries to endure all the pain and become stronger. The head of the university comes closer to the guy and notices that he got what he deserved. The man tries to hit the guy on the shoulder, adding that he has already done everything he could. At this moment, the guy manages to use the chaos technique, which makes him an order of magnitude stronger. With a slight movement of his hand, he points his finger into the man's palm. This unremarkable blow makes the man writhe in unbearable pain. At this moment, the system counts the completed task with 30 immortality points. The system also notices that everything is in time enough and the second level of the chaos technique will allow him to win the battle. Han Hao asks with a smile, does a man need a second hand? He pokes it anywhere, to explain through his tears that he needs a hand. At this moment, Jao runs along the corridor because he understands who has arrived in his building. On the way, he meets the secretary and clarifies why the girl notified Han Hao of his arrival. The guy watches Honey Hao in the hallway and worries about his condition. Zhao asks the guy to be careful because Yan Tanxing came with his teacher to take revenge. Zhao does not have time to tell his friend that he has prepared a black car, Han Hao holds that same master in his hands. Han Hao looks questioningly at Zhao, not understanding what his friend is talking about. The master and his ward lie soullessly on the floor. Jody understands how the guy managed to cope with such a serious opponent. He was glad that the Hanha was intact and also managed to point his finger up. Haniha asks if Zhao called him or not. The guy is trying to explain that there is a much more serious reason. Hanha wonders what exactly Zhou wanted to tell him. The guy explains that he is forbidden to tell this to outsiders, but after what he saw, he believes that he must tell Haniho. The guy takes a short pause in his speech. He asks the guy to help him save his father. Hanha says with a smile that he will help daddy's boy, Zhao asks not to joke like that. The guy tells the story of how there was a long-term war with Cheng Yi and in the end his father managed to expel him from the city. But just recently this man returned and decided to deal with his father, at the moment, this man is the head of a group of killers. Zhao is worried because his father has stopped drinking and eating for the past few days, and when they made inquiries about the man, they also learned about Yan Tianqing's plans. Han Hao assumes that this is why his friend called him, so he believes that he remained in debt. Han Hao agrees to help his friend and solve his problem, the guy was very happy about this. But the guy had more to say besides that. The guy reminds that this is a huge organization of killers and he doesn't want to offend Han Hao, but it seems that he can't handle it. I don't want to listen to my friend Han Ha kicks him in the ass because he is ready to deal with everything himself. Zhao offers to give his friend a ride home and so they set off in his yellow sports car. Zhao offers to stay with him today, I assume that Han Ha has no plans for tonight. Han Hao checks his phone, he is slightly worried that Ma Jie is left completely alone. At this moment, Ma Jie was in the bathroom and did not hear her phone at all. The phone lying on her bed was actively ringing. The girl leaves the bathroom at the last moment and hears beeps on her phone. Moji's voice, he was checking to see if everything was okay with her. The girl asks if the guy will come home today Han Hao he explains that he left on business with Zhao. Han Hao explains that he is worried about the girl and therefore sent several people to her, the guy says goodbye to the girl. At this point, Zhao decides to turn to Hao. Guy I was wondering if Han Hao lives with a girl. The guy begins to rush along the road. 
he was very worried about what kind of relationship he is in Moji. After a short time, they reached Zhao's house, it was a luxurious huge mansion. Han Hao could not believe what he saw, after all, it looked more like an imperial mansion. The guy takes his friend and introduces him to his father in the living room. The man greets his son and clarifies who this young man is. The guy explains that this is a very good friend of his, he explains that this guy should help them. Han Hao greets the man kindly. The man puts his hands in his pockets and also greets the guy. The man is grateful for the attempt to help him, but he understands that the guy will not be able to cope with his case. Han Hao would at least spend the night with them with a smile. The man explains that it will be very dangerous in their house this evening, Zhao confirms this and notifies his father that the Han Hao is a master in this matter. The man sighs, in his thoughts he doesn't believe that some guy can help them with anything. Han Hao wondering what people in suits are doing. The man pays attention to several workers who are doing something with the doorway. The man explains that these workers are installing cameras at all approaches to the house and in the house itself. He asks not to worry about his father because the protection system should protect them, the man is worried that this time he will come to kill himself and try to take revenge on him. Han Hao decides to go outside and take a walk. Han Hao decides to check with his system whether he has anything against the killers. The system declares that this cannot happen, after all, they have absolutely everything, listing all possible techniques. The guy declares that of course he will take the stand because it most likely is not disposable, system explains that the catcher's stance costs 100 immortality points, which he does not have. Haniho is angry at the system, after all, he has no choice. The system states that the guy himself chose to be an idiot and no one forced him, the guy adds that he knew that the system was not so kind. The guy buys a scroll of shadow catcher and spends 30 immortality points. The guy notices that his heart has taken such a waste of funds. The guy puts the scroll on the ground and seals it. The guy puts his hand on top of the scroll and tries to detect strange visitors in their house. He notices that he sees absolutely every movement anywhere in the Zhao estate. The guy decides to return to the estate and choose an empty room for himself. Waking up in the middle of the night, he hears something strange. The guy decides to check the entire area with his new vision. The guy notices that a ditch was made under the estate and someone was already able to get through. He watches as four people dig a tunnel and are already under the estate. The guy understands that their goal is the security room where Zhao is sitting. The guy abruptly remains in his bed and runs to help because now Han Hao planned to show them all his strength. Han Hao gets to the first floor and already sees the window into the security room where Zhao's father was. The guy kicks his feet and doors because he came to help the man. The first thing he observes is Zhao's father's laptop. The man puts on stop and pays attention to the incoming guy. There was an awkward pause between the man and Han Hao. The guy was shocked by what exactly his friend's father was doing at such a serious moment. The guy didn't understand where they were already able to get into the building. The guy assumes that the mercenaries decided to take a smoke break, Han Hao is outraged that they could have worked faster. The man closes your laptop and goes out to the guy, he clarifies why he is in his office at such a late hour. The guy tries to apologize for his intrusion because he didn't want to disturb the man. The man explains that he was trying to stay awake using this method because he was waiting for the killers who were supposed to arrive that evening. The guy notices that they have already made their way into the territory. The man assumes that the guy was simply scared, not perceiving his words, he is a man, he explains that every corner of the house is under a security system. The man explains that if unknown people had gotten in, they would have seen them on the cameras. The guy points his finger down, explaining that the camera will not be able to see what is happening underground. There is a scream and a small report behind the door. The guy continues to have a conversation with the man while in his office. At this moment, three unknown mercenaries burst into the office threatening death. One of the men adds that on this day he will kill Zhao. The guy doesn't understand why the mercenaries came in from the front door and after that they call themselves killers. The men noticed that Cheng still dared to come to his house. The mercenary explains that he came to take his worthless life. The man declares that the pervert who thinks about his wife is also trying to kill him, calling the mercenary unscrupulous. Han Hao begins to listen to the details of this whole brawl. A man tells a tragic story where he was separated from his wife. The man adds that a woman truly loves only him. At this moment the computer receives a call from the man's wife, Han Hao suggests asking for one and her opinion. 
The man responds to which the woman immediately asks to transfer more money to her, after all, she has run out of funds on her card. While in New York, the girl declares that she did not have enough money for all the entertainment and needs two more million. Noticing this, Ching decides to go to the monitor and also ask. The man, with tears in his eyes, clarifies what the girl feels for him and whether she remembers their oath. The girl does not understand why the man is with her husband, she explains that her name is Nancy, not Gui Xiang. The man was lost in a moment and didn't know what to say next. Han Hao they add that his legend does not agree much with reality. The man could not believe that it was another woman, he did not want to admit his guilt. The man takes out his blade and decides to deal with Zhao. Zhao is unable to fight back, he just looks at his killer. But all the blades land on a regular table. Han Hao manages to cover Zhao's body, he assumes that the man does not perceive him at all. The man is trying to clarify who the unknown guy is and why he also wants to die. The guy states that because of this man he has already suffered twice. The man doesn't understand what the guy is talking about and why fool around. In his thoughts, Han Hao noticed that he had spent 30 points on all this nonsense, which did not suit him at all. The man declares that the guy is tired of living and therefore fights with him. All the mercenaries suddenly begin to throw shurikens at Han Hao. The guy is trying to shield the man with his body from a large flow of shuriken. Han Hao uses his signature chaos technique, after which he immediately tries to push all the shurikens towards the attackers. The unknown crowd of mercenaries quickly becomes defeated and soullessly falls to the ground. Only Ching remains, he sits on the floor and cannot believe what is happening. The man decides to call security so that Ching does not have time to escape. Han Hao suggests not to rush and see where time leads. The man in his thoughts cannot understand what the guy is talking about, after all, they have already managed to escape, Han Hao they add that they should beware of an earthquake. All the mercenaries are trying to hurry down into the tunnel prepared in advance. The tunnel suddenly collapses and all the mercenaries fall underground. Han Hao itself. The guy is not interested in where the bandits are in such a hurry because he is in the building. He lands hard on the ground, the stone slabs begin abruptly producing a small earthquake. The man could not believe what he saw, adds with a grin that it's better to deal with everyone together than separately. All the mercenaries lay in the pit, pinned down by stones, they could not move. The man slowly approaches the guy and notices that they made their way into the house through the ground. And at that moment Zhao runs out, as well as several guards. Han Hao notices that the male guards are slightly late. The man thanks the guy for saving him because without him nothing would have happened. The Han Hao accept the gratitude and head to the room to sleep for the remaining time. The next day, Han Hao goes out to meet Zhao's father. The man once again thanks for his salvation and decides to give a small gift from the whole family. The man calls it a sacred tree that brings good luck to people and also suggests that there are other uses, the system notices that this is a giant magical tree and it increases the effect of practice a hundred times. Han Hao notices that the stick looks quite interesting. The system declares that there is no point in deceiving the guy, Han Hao they add that he does not know what the system may have in mind. The system decides to explain that if the guy doubts, then in any case it will only be his problem. At this moment, Zhao enters the room, he invites the guy to go back to the city. The guy doesn't understand where Han Ho went because he knew that he was in this room. At this moment, Han Ho was in an unknown place. The guy clarifies the entire system where he is currently located, system explains that he is in a place where it will be easier for him to concentrate on practice. The system also adds that it has already prepared everything and in order for the guy to leave this place he will have to master a new ability. The guy understands that the system caught him and now he will have to stay in this place. The guy decides not to waste time and start training, he sits in a pose and begins to meditate. The guy notices after a while that the stick doesn't help him at all. The system remembers that although the guy became a seeker of immortality, he still has not had time to work with the spiritual component. Han Hao reminds that the system said everything will be studied without problems, the system asks you not to find fault with details. The guy repeatedly clarifies whether he needs to master the ability to leave the place, to which he receives a positive answer, the system also explains that without the magic tree, it would have taken about a month. Han Hao screams from the hole, he was dissatisfied with this situation. Three days later, on the next day when Han Hao was training, a golden glow was visible. The guy once again sat and meditated to improve his new skill. 
The system could not understand how the guy managed to master the ability in just three days without using a magic tree. At these words, Han Hao simply grinned. The action moves to Li Tianhao's house. The guy notices that the more money you have, the further you live. Elder Li greets Han Hao, he was glad to see him. Han Hao thanks for the hospitality and for inviting him, the man considers this an ordinary trifle. The man explains that the girl is with Xiao Xuan. The man reminds that he has a granddaughter whom he saw earlier. The guy remembers the girl in Elder Li's office. The man asks the guy to invite both girls while he orders tea to be prepared for them. A guy walks down the corridor and doesn't understand which door he needs to go through. Han Hao notices that one of the doors was open. Deciding to try his luck, Han Hao looks in in search of Ma Jie. Granddaughter was in the room, she was changing clothes in her room. The guy was amazed at what he saw, this was not what he expected. The girl blushed with shame, because the guy continued to look at her. Han Hao abruptly leaves the room and apologizes at the same time, the weight flew after him. The weight hit the railing and was severely damaged, this scared Han Ho slightly. At this moment, Ma Jie came out to Han Hao, she was happy to see Han Hao. The girl tried to find out where the guy had gone all these days because she was worried, the guy explains that he had to go on a trip. The girl wonders if Xiao Shuang Li screamed, the guy looks away and tries to say that nothing happened. A scream is heard above the door, which greatly confuses the guy. The girl notices that it is Xiao Shuang who is shouting and offers to visit her. Han Hao notices that he is ready to enter the room, but he is not to blame for anything. The guy notices the open window, Xiao Shuang was no longer in the room. The guy would understand that the girl was kidnapped. After which Han Hao goes to the window to see the kidnapper. Going out onto the balcony, Han Hao examines the area. The guy's eyes run around and look around. The guy pays attention to the walking figure along the road. It was a strange unknown man in a black cloak. The guy looks closely to see that there was an unknown girl on his shoulder. Without hesitation, Han Hao jumps off the balcony and follows the kidnapper. The girl does not have time to say anything to the fleeing Han Hao. Afterwards, she decides to shout out to the guy to be careful. Han Hao, trying to catch up with the kidnapper, shouts for him to stop. The guy adds that he will not allow the girl to be kidnapped in front of his eyes. The guy explains that he will not retreat and will run until the end until he catches the kidnapper. Unknown decides to stop and turn around in front of Han Hao. The guy assumes that the kidnapper exhaled and decided to take his fight. Unknown was breathing heavily due to his haste, he laughed back at the guy. The guy adds that if the kidnapper lets the girl go and returns him back, he will have mercy on him. The visitor shows with his finger that he refuses this offer. The guy understands that almost you are not going to and that's why Han Hao seems so impudent. Han Hao also wanted to test his new skills acquired while away. Han Hao activates his new ability, his hand turns golden. 